Hey, everybody, welcome to the podcast. My guest today is big wave surfer, Laird Hamilton. This is an absolutely unbelievable conversation. I think you guys are gonna really dig it. So without further ado, after hitting that subscribe button, please enjoy my conversation with the great Laird Hamilton. Let's do it. Laird Hamilton in the house. Thanks, man. I appreciate you coming out to do this. On your mark, you can set go. Yeah, let's it do it. It was close. It was close. We've been going back and forth. This may be one of the longest your schedule, my schedule, I know. scheduling. I know. It's been it's been a minute. We were supposed to do this last week, then a swell emerged. And God forbid I'm gonna get in between you and a wave. Not that I could, <laughs> but that wasn't happening. So here we are. I suppose it's flat out today. Yeah. Well, somewhere it's not. But, uh -huh. Right. But somewhere. That's the story of my life. Yeah, that's where that's where your your dream state that's takes right. you, I'm always, right? Over, searching in the distance. <laughs> over where there might be a swell. Um, well, I don't know if you have any recollection of this at all. I'd be surprised if you did, but I don't know if you remember, but back in about, it was late 2012, my family and I were living at Common Ground and in the yurts behind, uh, behind the restaurant there. And I was doing some stuff with Chris Jabe at the time. And you and your family would come and eat at the restaurant pretty much every day, eating Rodman's amazing food. That place is no longer, right? Chris, Sad, that was Chris one of the saddest things I've it. ever seen. People work their whole lives to make a successful restaurant. You don't ever, I when know. you get one, you never, you're never supposed to stop it. <laughs> but Chris was losing like yeah, 50 yeah. grand a month or yeah. something like that yeah. on that restaurant. He was doing yeah. it just because it was a passion of his sure. and he wanted to make it available to the community, but he, he was like hemorrhaging money on it. Yeah. Well, um, I think hemorrhaging on that project, the restaurant was yeah. actually the one of the, probably the only successful know, thing. No, he I think was he was going losing money on the restaurant too. as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we had come out. Um, I was trying to help him figure out something productive to do with the property, but you know, ultimately he couldn't figure out what he wanted to do with it. And, uh, and he's moved on from then, but that was like a really um, precious period in our family's life to like live on that farm for that period. We were there for like almost four months. Um, and I just remember you guys coming in and that's where I started this podcast and Gabby was like my third guest on the show or something like that. But I would see you and um, and like you scared, like I was intimidated by you. Like I was too afraid to come and talk to you. I was like, oh, there's Laird over there, man. I want to talk to him, but I, but like I never did. And then it took this many years for us to get together and do the podcast. So anyway, that's my big well, backstory. Well, as soon as I looked at you, I knew, I knew you. I'm ter like my name stuff is the worst in the world, but facial mm -hmm. recognition, I think it's probably connected to survival. Just yeah. so you know the foes and the friends. Yeah. But I look, I, when you're saying the door, I'm like, I know that. I've I know seen that guy. I yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you. Um, I remember Gabby talking to my wife, Julie, at one point, and, and she was like, she was like, uh, you guys might like Maui, you know? <laughs> and that's a loaded statement. Um, I've spent a lot of time on the islands, on all the islands, not nearly, not nearly as much time as you have, obviously, um, but there's something very powerful in the energy um, you can feel it when you're in Hawaii for sure. And, and more than any other place on the North shore of Kauai. And that was a, it was a challenging period for us because, um, you know, we wouldn't, we, we were new, we were interlopers and we were trying to like create a little community or a little, you know, like plant some roots there. Cause we weren't sure we were going to come back to LA. Like we were considering staying there and it was, it was hard, man, trying to navigate like the unwritten rules about how you behave in that part of the world. That's true. Well, yeah. and 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 each island is is distinctly different. Every island's uh -huh. different. The sides of the islands are different, and and Kauai is we you know Kauai is the uh, well I always say you know bright light dark shadow. Right. You know it has the, it has the and it's and it's I mean I don't know if there's a connection to it's the wettest place on earth. Yeah. It's you know and just it's kind of and it's the unconquered kingdom by Kamehameha. So mm -hmm. the the great uniter of the you know of all the islands couldn't conquer Kauai and so Kauai has kind of a it has a uh, you know there's an aspect to it I think that it it definitely makes you kind of introspective. I think you just go there and you kind of go in and if you're not ready for yeah. fully in then it's <laughs> yeah 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 i mean there's there's incredible light mm. but there's a heavy darkness there Absolutely. and you can feel it and i Absolutely. spent more more time on the big island and yeah. a lot of time not you know in 
Kailua, but yeah. like in the small towns and riding yeah. my bike all around the island. And I think most people's relationship with Hawaii is they, they fly there, they're at a resort the entire time, they have a great time. That's not Hawaii, man. Like no. Hawaii is a very different place and you really, you can't fuck around with that energy because it will bury you. It will. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and it, it, we, cause Gabby and I laugh cause she grew up on islands too. So she has island sensitivity and island awareness uh-huh. and you see people kind of glamorize, Hey, we're going to move there and live in the paradise and the whole thing. And then like, you <laughs> just kind of go, okay, well, if you're coming in with that naivety, like you're coming uh-huh. in thinking it's just, everything's all, you know, rose petals, you're going to probably have a, a rude awakening. It's better to go, you know, I, and, and Gabby says this the best. And I, listen, I mm-hmm. was raised there. I've lived there. You know, I mean, I, it was a technicality that I wasn't born in Hawaii. I was mm-hmm. born in San Francisco, but been in Hawaii since I was three months old. And I always walk like I'm a visitor, yeah. you know? And I think it's important to, probably to do that everywhere in life. Like you always feel like you're you're just, you're a visitor. Because whenever you see people that get too prideful of, you know, hey, I'm a such and such, or I'm from here or something like that, I think that kind of, that, I think that can hold you back and definitely affect your conduct. Yeah, I mean, it requires an extra level of humility, I think. It does. I remember I wanted to shoot some video stuff and I was talking to Joel Guy, you know yeah. Joel, right? Yeah. And we were planning some stuff and I thought, well, I can just go, I was gonna go to this beach and do this thing. And he's like, you can't do it, you know. He's like, if, you, if I'm not with you, forget it. Yeah. You know, he's like, you're, yeah. you know, they don't know who you are. Yeah. You know, and that's different and new, like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, hey man, I'm not trying to yeah. get in anybody's yeah, way or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's like, no, 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 yeah. you don't understand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Joel and I have been uh, childhood friends. So I know, I've known yeah. Joel since I we know. were we were little kids. Is he but still doing his thing out there? He's still doing it. He yeah. does a lot of community stuff. So he's working in in Honolulu and then working with the community. Right. He's trying to. I mean, the community has ongoing things. I mean, with floods and right. hurricanes and and then COVID and I mean, all right. this stuff is. Adding up. I was. I, I would have thought you'd be already out there by now. Yeah, I. I normally I would be. We just have had a lot of uh, a lot of work stuff going on with the girls, uh-huh. especially too, because my daughters. You know, my my middle daughter is is uh, hitting a lot of tennis balls, and so there's not mm-hmm. a great. You know, in the wettest spot on earth, you better have a covered tennis court yeah. to, if you want. You know, to be able to put time into that, and then my youngest daughter's going to school, um, which in the past was online. Now it now it's. Then it wasn't last year, and now it's back online, of course, uh-huh. uh, because of because of what's going on with the pandemic. But so I'm, the girls are kind of holding me back here. I'm also uh, just finishing uh, a home on on the island that oh, I've wow. been working on for 20 years. Oh, so wow. like That's a long, cool. like I have sometimes these crazy, like lifelong goals, you know, that that are like they I, they come to fruition like 20 and 30 years down the line. It's uh-huh. it, it's not on purpose, but it just seems like maybe that's just like a relentless pursuit. Like you have a vision or a dream or see something and then you just, and you get, you know, you get distracted, but you just keep coming back to it. And eventually, uh-huh. you babysitting know- Babysitting <laughs> it over the years. <laughs> kind of like how I babysat getting you on the podcast. It took two, three years yeah, or whatever. Yeah, well, but you were talking <laughs> you to know. Gabby. So at the end yeah, you had, yeah. the, you know, you had, yeah, yeah. You had the, uh, but you don't, the good you, line. You, that's interesting because you don't strike me as somebody who who is like a goal setter. You strike me as somebody who's more like intuition based. Like you follow your heart, you follow your, your, your curiosity, your creativity. It's not like, here's my goal and I'm working towards that. You seem more in the moment in general. You know, maybe I'm using the wrong word. I'm using, I'm using following my, my pat, my mm-hmm. intuitions mm-hmm. and following my instincts as, and then, and then identifying something. I think I've had the fortune to be able to kind of, I have the fortune to be able to sometimes understand what certain things will mean uh-huh. over, you know, in time, like, Hey, if you get on this board and you start paddling and that eventually that's going to, people are going to like to do that. And they're going to be able to do that all over. Just, it, you know, it's, it's, it's part of that, in, uh, that, that, uh, you know, I think there's an aspect to innovation that you understand what the, what the, what the mechanism or what the, what the, the, idea will, will uh-huh. eventually turn into. So I, and then it turns, so that almost seems goalish at times. 
Yeah, but it, it almost it, gets a little gold. But, like, it, but it's rooted in play. Like yeah, you go yeah, yeah. out and start playing around with yeah. toe surfing yeah. because there's no waves. It's not like, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm imagining rein, reinventing surfing. Yeah, no. It's just no. like one thing leads to another. And That's then, true. you know, a year later, you're doing things that you wouldn't have anticipated when you first just started fucking around with that stuff. That's true. But, you know, I think I think uh, one a, a quote I really like is that they say that innovative people are fulfilled by accomplishing things and that competitive people are, are fulfilled by beating others. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. I'm, I'm really on the, the, I, I really enjoy, uh, the, you know, that fulfillment of, 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 okay, I think I can do this and then get, mm-hmm. and then you not, I, I can beat this guy or I can outdo that guy. Yeah. It's more about, you know, the accomplishing, these tasks, which it's is- It's internal. It's an yeah. internal thing. Yeah. It's not, yeah. you're not measuring, you've, you've never yeah. been one to measure yourself against what anybody else is doing. No. It's all just how it measures up against what you think you're capable of. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Or what's possible. Like uh-huh. what's, and then you might not even be capable of it, but, but is that possible? And then you figure out how to become capable of it. Maybe, right. You know? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Necessity is um, the mother of invention. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it, what's funny about that. I, I watched, I rewatched uh, Riding Giants last night. Ben, I don't know when that movie came out. It was a while ago, but I, I hadn't seen it in a long time. And I just watched it as a refresher yeah, Stacey course. Peralta. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. Um, and what struck me is, you know, you're, you're you've been labeled with this moniker of being like the innovator in surfing, and, and you certainly are that. But when you watch that movie, you understand that the history of surfing is innovation. It's constant innovation, right? Like from the very beginning, when you track it all the way back to the first big waves that were that were that were surfed, and how they just iterate and iterate and iterate. Like you're just continuing in that tradition, which is makes it weird when you hear. Like I know there are people that you know are traditionalists in some regard that give you shit for trying yeah. new things, but this is There's what surfing that. is, right? Yeah. yeah. From it, from the very beginning back to, you know, with a thousand years ago, I didn't realize like that's when it started. Or even, or even more, I think, I think it came out in the necessity to learn how to navigate, you know, going out into mm-hmm. the ocean when there was surf. And then, and then, then through that, like the guy, if you could take your boat and ride the waves in, then you, that brought right. in a whole understanding of, but, uh, you know, I, I grew up in a time when in surfing uh, that it was all about innovation. Like that was the focus. Uh-huh. And then it kind of, I think when 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 the competitive aspect of surfing came in, it kind of stopped innovation because it forced a certain, you know. Rules it, it, and structure. It, it, well, yeah, yeah, because you couldn't, you couldn't take the risk to right. go out and try something that didn't work. It would it'd be like, it, it'd be like if you're a bike racer and you're going to go in a bike race, you're not going to try some new prototype bike right. in a yeah, bike yeah, race because yeah, yeah. it's going to break. You're just going to go with what you know works. And then, and then I think that kind of, in a way, um, you know, they talk about in, in like, uh, in computer design that all the innovations happened when there was a think tank, uh-huh. when everybody were together and they were mm-hmm. just throwing ideas. And then as soon as somebody got, competitive or they got possessive with an idea and held it and then stopped sharing, then that, then that's when it kind of, everything mm. slowed down for mm-hmm. a while. And so, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I just remember everybody that I was around, they were, you know, I mean, it was the sixties and people were, you know, doing all kinds of drugs as well to give their, yeah. you maybe to give their imagination more of a boost. But the truth is they were they were, there was a lot of innovation going on and they were doing weird designs and weird boards. And I mean, if uh-huh. you look back then and you look at the equipment and you're like, S- some of the stuff is so bizarre <laughs> yeah. looking and, and, uh, and then it kind of went through this flat period. But I, I think for me, I always, that was the, you know, uh, uh, Brian Keolana is a great Hawaiian waterman and kind of a Hawaiian chief. And, you know, he, he always would say, Hey, don't define me by my equipment, uh-huh. which I appreciated that. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's just a tool like, Hey, yeah. which you know, which yeah. tool are you going to use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting that the flat period lines up with the rise of competitive surfing. And competitive surfing is not part of riding, like it's never even addressed in riding giants. No. It's like, it's no. just not part of that narrative at all. And no. and you never even dipped your toe in that, right? I When I was little, we, we played because it was fun. You know, when you're a little uh-huh. kid, you go down and it was like you and your friends showed up at the little surf contest at the beach and you all went out and kind of, it was like, and then, you know, it, well, there was no money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then money came along and, you know, and then it was all of a sudden it was like, okay, everybody got- Gets weird. Yeah. Yeah. Gets aggressive and- But, you anything. know, looking back now, we're in this, 
we were talking about social media and our kids before <laughs> before this started and and you know how how addictive all of that is but one thing that it has created is the ability for athletes in all different disciplines and specialties to kind of craft their own path mm. like when i look back on your career like you were really the first or one of the first people who said i'm not going to do I'm going to be a professional athlete on my own terms and I'm going to define what those terms are. I'm not going to I'm not going to participate in this structure. I'm going to do it outside of that. And that was pretty radical at the time and you've been successful in that and lit the path for many to follow in your in your footsteps, but now because of these technological tools, you're seeing athletes do that. Like they well, can all... make a name for themselves and support themselves doing what they love without it being in that traditional competitive environment. Well, see, I mean really in all art I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at all art in a way, I mean, you look at music, you can get exposure. I mean, it, it, that's one of the, I mean, you know, every, again, bright light, dark shadow, right? Yeah. What, one of the, one of the great things about, you know, social media and just the, 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 these tools, the, the block I call it, is that you can, it's an opportunity to expose your skills and your talent to the world and let them, you know, if you, the followers will decide if you have a bunch yeah. of people following and are interested in what you're doing or saying or, or dressing or whatever it is you're doing. Um, it, it's, you, I mean, you can, you can make a living from it. Right. And which is pretty amazing. It is cool. I mean, it's, it's super cool that people can do that. It now. is, it is. And it's, a, and it's allowing a lot more freedom in, uh, in art in general, yeah. when I call art, I just mean self-expression, right? In a way it's, it's, it's forms of self-expression. And in my case, it just happens to be in sport, uh -huh. but in some other cases it is in music, it's in right. cooking, it's in fashion, it's in, you know, lifestyle. It's, yeah. You just go down the line. But it, it had to be hard back in those early days, trying to figure out how you're gonna make that work. Right? Well, you just, you just sure try you to do people everything. in your life who were like, what are you doing? Like, you yeah. gotta get a job, yeah. right? Well, you subsidize it mm. any way you can. That's why I did, you know, if it's like, oh, a modeling job. Hey, you look good in that thing, take a picture. Uh -huh. Or, hey, you're gonna be a, you know, be a, in, a, in a movie and you can do stunt work. Okay, I'll do, I mean, it's like, right. you just do what you, you did what you, you did whatever you needed to do to subsidize your, yeah. I always say, you know, now I'm in a position where I can subsidize my excavator work mm. with surfing. I would I would subsidize yeah. surfing with excavation. Like yeah. I'd go dig an excavator so I could yeah. go surfing. So you did whatever you could. I, I think one thing that really allowed me uh, a real opportunity was was Oxbow, which was this mm -hmm. this the French company that sponsored me for more than twenty years, mm -hmm. and it was you know because I didn't have to you know m cut trees, mow yard, dig holes, pour cement, hammer nails all to survive because I had that that kind of that support. It allowed me a little more uh freedom to yeah. to practice my skills and to be creative and to work mm -hmm. on stuff and and so that was a fortunate thing. I think without them and that support during that stretch of time, I wouldn't have had quite the luxury to be able to be as creative as right. I was. So I think that 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 was a, a unique thing that happened, but you know, all along the way, you're always, you know, you, you just do whatever. The puzzle pieces, but you grew up, you know, on the, when you're, when you're a kid on the North shore and you're seeing all those dudes, you yeah. know, who obviously influenced you so profoundly, like that's what they were doing, right? Yeah. So you realize like, oh, I can, I can figure out how I, to get a bag of rice or whatever Absolutely. I need to live. Oh yeah, they do whatever, fish yeah. in the summer, work on the thing in this way. I mean, you did, they, they would do, I mean, and it's a little bit like, uh, it's a little bit island, island, island lifestyle. Like I, sometimes I get around people and they're like, well, how do you know how to do that? Like, uh -huh. how do you, how do you know how to fix that thing? And I go, well, I lived at the end of a road where if you didn't fix it, it was broken. Right. Like there was no, like call the guy that fixes those. Mm. There was no, you know, it wasn't yeah. so specialized like it is now. Like you just had to kind of, you know, I always love MacGyver. Like MacGyver for right. me is the best. Just give me the bubble gum and the duct tape and a little tie wire. And, you know, and you can just jury rig something and get something that was broken to work. And I think that that mentality is d definitely useful in, in well, not only survival, but in innovation. Yeah, too. innovating all yeah. These, these, these new iterations of what surfing yeah. is and can be. Exactly. Um, that which, imagination, that's what Thomas Edison said. He said, well, all you need to be an inventor is an imagination and a pile of junk. So uh -huh. I'm like, well, I always had the junk. He was a good marketer too, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, marketer. <laughs> he, knew, there's always he had that, that part dialed yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, well, there's that too. Uh -huh. That's a piece of it. Um, I, wanna, uh, I wanna talk about 
water and your relationship to water and and the ocean. Like I'm I'm in certain respects like a different kind of waterman. I, I'm a swimmer. I grew up swimming. Swimming is my passion, and it started in pools. And you know I've I've done interesting things in the water, like monofin swimming, things like that. And now it's about ocean swimming. And then I got into ultra endurance triathlon and all of that. But I have a very um, deep and emotional connection to the experience of, of being in water and underwater. Um, that's overlaps with yours a, a little bit, I would suppose. So I'm interested in how you think about your relationship to the ocean and, and you know, how you articulate like what that means. First of all, that's my grand master, right? Like if you said, who's your, you know, people say, hey, who do you look up to or who's you, who do you, you know, who influenced you? I mean, I'd have to say that the ocean probably has had the biggest impact on shaping, you know, the way I behave more mm -hmm. than any, any one person, except maybe my mom, because she birthed me and she had a huge influence, of course, but the ocean, uh, the lessons that you learn from the ocean, uh, the relationship that you have with it. Um, it just, it, it, it covers so many things. And I, I know that, you know, uh, my reverence for the ocean, just my, my, my reverence for its power, its beauty, uh, you know, it, it, it it's ma it's magnitude, like it's just mm -hmm. the massiveness of it and, and the in insignificance it's our, it's our space, right? Like the ocean is our space on earth. Like if you want to know what space is like, you just go to the ocean and that'll right. tell you what you can go to the edge of the space or you can go deep into space. And it's, it's been, it was a great escape for me when I was a kid to, to leave kind of the, the, the cares of the land uh -huh. behind you yeah. and all the worries and all the stresses. When that you're going, underwater, all of that gets muted, muted, right? And it's just between you and the elements. Yeah. And, and maybe just a giant shark that may be lurking in the distance. Yeah, you just might, right? <laughs> there's, always, there's, always, yeah. there's always that in the back of your head, like, mm, let me see. I'm not a big right. fan of swimming out in the middle of the ocean with a mass that you can't see very well. But, <laughs> yeah. but the, uh, but, you know, so I think I, I you know, so the, so the, the relationship um, with the animals in the ocean, with the way, just with the, with how it makes you feel like, like it, like the therapy mm -hmm. of the, of, of the, it's, it, it it's heals like being you. back in the womb. It is. You know? Yeah. And you get healed from it. Mm -hmm. Like you can go and be in the water and, you know, now we get all these science, you know, science follows, I say science follows instinct, but you know, you, you get, you have these ideas like, Hey, this really, like I go there and I feel different. Everything's different. Then they get some data and they're so like, yeah, right. well, that's cause you're getting negative ions yeah. and the thing and you're grounding and you're compression right. and all this stuff. But, um, Andrew Huberman shows yeah. up and validates yeah. what you've been yeah. telling yourself for 20 years. No, it's true. Right? Yeah. It's true. And then that's, and, that, and that's kind of, I mean, that's pretty amazing that in this time, you know, in the, in the world that we mm -hmm. can do that, that we're getting to do that. But, but it, it seems like your, your, your instincts, you know, your gut instincts and your intuitions and all those things, um, those serve you right. And I think there's a karmic thing. I, I mean, obviously the ocean is the most conductive element on mm -hmm. earth. It, 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 and, and so, you know, sound travels through it, waves, sound waves, but also wave energy, what we ride. Yeah. So, you know, and I know like karmically, you know, whenever I'm in the ocean and I, and I have some negative thoughts or some feelings or something, I usually just pay instantaneously. I'm right. like, I crash, the wave comes and hits me and I'm Karma like, comes oh quick. yeah, that's right. I was supposed to, I gotta, I gotta shed that stuff. I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta clear my Another, again, my like a deeper level of humility. I mean, there's mm -hmm. this idea that you're conquering these waves. You're not conquering these waves. You're <laughs> yeah. trying to, yeah. you're trying to, to exist in symbiosis mm. with them. Right? Harmonious. That's what I always talk about the harmony. Riding the wave is, is the act of, uh, you know, is an act of harmony. You're trying to be harmonious with it. You don't conquer waves. You have right. the fortune to to ride them for a moment and be part of them. And, you know, if everything goes right, um, but yeah, you don't, there's no conquering just, no, no, the, no. the ocean. That's, no, and I, I, you know, my sense is that it gives you this deep appreciation for the natural world, right? Does. Like I've I had Alex Honnold on here, I've had Killian Journey and like the themes, you know, it's it's just this this like the majesty of nature is is just so profound when you're, you know, in the midst of trying to do your thing. Yeah. Well, in harmony observant. with that harsh Ob natural environment where the stakes are very high. The observant, you know, being observant. I think that's uh, even today. Like I was at not my house, and the, there were some hawks that that fly by my house, and and just 
and they come and, and, you know, and it's, and the more aware you are, it seems the more connected you become mm -hmm. to it. And all of a sudden it's almost like they come over and say hi to you and you're like, Hey, how's it going? They go, and they, and then they turn away. And yeah. I mean, and you could go, yeah, okay. The Hawk, but did the Hawk, I mean, you, you were connecting with the Hawk, the uh -huh. Hawk came and, but you have to be observant to even see the Hawk. Then you have to actually put the energy and the thoughts to, to the Hawk in a way that you, that you're how you're observing it and what you're, what it means to you. And that happens with the dolphins. That happens with the, you know, the whale that happens right. with all the, the, the creatures of creation and ultimately nature. I mean, nature is just, I mean, it's, it's, it is creation, right? So we talk about creation, the great creation, well, uh -huh. nature's creation. So, it, so you get to observe it. And I think, I think being aware of it, being aware of the sunrise and the sunset and the movement and all that stuff connecting to it allows you a deeper relationship with it. Uh -huh. You just can't, cause you can't have this deep relationship without it, without connect, without having the, you know, the observation and being aware of yeah. all these things as you become, the more aware you become, the deeper that relationships become. And then the more it shows itself to you. Yeah. It's like people talk about going on these, you know, journeys and reconnecting with nature. And I'm like, yeah, if you're already reconnected, if you're already connected, then that you, that's not going to be so profound. It's just that mm. so many of us have grown so far away from, hey, it's hot. Oh, turn the cool, you know, AC mm -hmm. on. Hey, it's cold. Turn the chill on. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, it's dark. Put the lights on. Hey, it's, you know, it's bright. Put the shades yeah. on. It's like, we're just, we're insulating ourselves from, from it. And, you know, and, and, and obviously the ocean is the, is the king because right. it's alive and yeah. moving and, 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 and has, I mean, all the things it can do, just freezing and liquid and steam and just the, I mean, we just, it's like the un, the un, uh, you know, the unexpressible element. It's, yeah. It just has too many. And still so mysterious. Mysterious. You know. Mysterious. But on the, on the hawk example, <laughs> I mean, I think the, the hawk example to me is an illustration of the fact that no matter where you are, you're still in nature. Like we have this mm. bifurcated like idea, like, Right now we're not in nature. Like if we we need to go down to Point Doom to be in nature, but we're in nature right now. Oh, absolutely. We're always in nature and we always have that opportunity to be more connected to the environment and the energy and everything that's going on if we can be still and observant. Oh man. I think that that's one of the things that, that will help everyone, will help humanity the most is if we can continue to, to re, because we have it, right. We have a, we have an ability to really be, be connected to nature in a way that, that we don't, is so profound. We don't even fully understand it. The depth of what we're, we're capable of and what we, and the depth of that relationship. Cause you know, I always, you know, we are it and it is us. I mean, we're, we're so, con you know, if you think you're not connected to the sun, <laughs> if you think you're not connected yeah. to, you know, everything and you're not, and it, it's not you and you're not it, then that's, you know, right. And that's the big separation right now. And it seems that in the present that, that we've been, we've become so insulated that that's, what's leading to people being, you know, either depressed or having physical ailments or whatever it is. A lot of it is because they're not fulfilling. I believe they're not fulfilling, you know, this void which is what nature was fulfilling. Right. Like nature was filling this void in them through just even uh, even observation, even yeah. just looking and connecting that way is filling this. And then all of a sudden you have this void and then you're just putting stuff in it that the body, you know, and the soul and, and everything can't yeah. can't connect to. Not, not, probably not a lot of, not an epidemic of, of anxiety and depression in, you know, no. indigenous tribes that are, you know, dealing with survival and, connected fundamentally to the world in which they live. You know what I mean? None. Yeah, I there would be none. Yeah. That, no allergies either. But no then on allergies top of either. That, <laughs> on top of that, to to engage in, you know, the the high risk kind of adventures mm. that, you know, light you up, yeah. gives you uh, you know, it puts you in 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 this contact with the fragility of life or what death means that I mm. think enlivens your daily experience, right? Like how do how do you think about risk and, and, and death. Well, I mean, I, first of all, I think, uh, that's the on, most honest way you can live. The most honest way you can live is, is to, to know that dying is very easy and you can die any minute. Mm -hmm. And then you, how would you conduct yourself? You know what I mean? It, and it's, and I think for me, that's a daily challenge and a, and a, and a, and a weekly challenge and a monthly challenge and a yearly challenge is this to always have that kind of awareness that, 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 
death is ever present. And then, and the truth is, is that the truth is that right now death has a name and it's walking around and people are, it's, it's affecting people severely because they, because their relationship with death is, is so insulated through just the, the way life has become that it's, we're not living honestly, like right. we would, if we were out in nature being threatened constantly by stuff, then we'd be, our awareness would be so heightened. But I, you know, I, I feel that you don't know what being truly alive is and unless without that relationship to mm -hmm. that edge, you know, to knowing where that mm -hmm. edge is. Like when you're a kid, like, Hey, wh where's this place where, you know, where do you fall off? It's just, it's just a big, it, it's, if you take the evolution of what's dangerous when you're a little kid and you grow into a mature adult, then you go, okay, well, that's the same relationship. It's just, a, everything's become, the scales have become bigger, Yeah. but it's still the, it's still honest. It's just so honest. It's, I know for me, it makes me a better person. If I, if I'm, mm. if I go in those situations and, and in the environments and around the, the, the strength of it, the strength of, of vulnerability, right. Yeah. The, the strength of true vulnerability. And, you know, the, the, the highest end of vulnerability is death. Right. I mean, there's yeah. all kinds of vulnerability, like, Hey, get your hurt, feelings hurt. And you know, the tribe might accept you public speaking. I mean, people are fear that more than right. death because yeah. they're worried about acceptance. So, but vulnerability, right. Vulner being vulnerable and, 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 and how that makes you, and that makes you just feel mm -hmm. so alive. And, 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 and that's honest. That's, that's yeah. it. What's, what's interesting about that is that it runs so counter to every message that we see out in the world, which is all about comfort and luxury and, you know, fancy bullshit or whatever. And we're, you know, sort of fed this narrative that if we want to be happy, it's all about, you know, getting the stuff or isolating ourselves, removing ourselves from anything threatening. And in truth, you're a living example of this, that sense of, purpose or that engagement with the world that gives you that feeling of being alive only comes through challenging yourself or immersing yourself in the elements and pushing the boundaries of what you're capable of. And it's it's something that, it's not like a one and done. You gotta do it your whole life. It's a practice like it's anything a, it's else. A it's a daily practice. And, and, and the truth is that's the irony, right? The irony of the story is that, that all the things that you think what you are, what you need are the things that are going to, are going to bring you the furthest away from your, your goal, which would be to feel alive and to, and to, and to, and to be, and yeah. to be healthy at the end of the day. Like mm -hmm. what's, it's connected to health, right? It's like, you know, it, it, the irony is, is that the, that exposing yourself to great threat makes you the healthiest you can be, which is, mm -hmm. that's like, that's, right. that's the most confusing thing ever, right? Yeah. Like, okay, go do dangerous stuff. And then that'll make you, that'll make you the healthiest you could be. You're kind of like, okay, right. well, that seems, it seems like you should <laughs> be really safe and do things. And then uh -huh. that'll make you vulnerable to be really sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's right. like that, it, it just doesn't, but that's, but that it's that simple. Like it's really that, I think there's, it, there's a sim, you know, I, I always talk about if everybody just scared themselves once a day that, and genuinely scared themselves once a day, it would be good for you. Like it would uh -huh. just, it would just reset, like everything gets reset and you're like, okay, all right. Like, it, like, and I, I use an example of, you know, sometimes you're driving down the road and you're kind of just, you're feeling a little flat and all of a sudden something, you know, an animal runs out or a car almost get something happens and you get that adrenaline right. boost. And then all of a sudden you're just like, your vision gets real sharp. All of a sudden you're just like, everything just gets clear and you're like, you're aware and your, and your senses are in high alert. And then and you're like, and it took that, it was just boom, that quick. Mm -hmm. And that, that living in the state of that kind of awareness is such a better, it's just, it's just, it's a better way to, you know, yeah. it's like, it's a better way to yeah. live. But it's also about having a healthy relationship with that too, yes. because yeah. you can, you can, yeah. you know, you can have an addictive relationship have a, have to friends. that that will destroy yeah. your relationships. And, yep. and, you know, you just become, you have tunnel vision over right. what's the next thing that's going to jack me up. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah, sure yeah. you have, I've yeah. got friends like that. Yeah. A lot of them are And there's here, a lot actually. of destruction in the wake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. A lot, a lot of them are gone. Yeah. A lot of guys I know that I mean, were, has that ever been like something you've, you've had to like, you know, deal with or you seem pretty grounded and and level about the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, I I I mean, listen, I think I was I've been fortunate to be around uh enough of those guys and, uh -huh. and watched, you know, I've seen a lot of good guys, you know, die mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the yeah. because of the 
of of the either the complacency from doing it doing stuff and not retaining that respect maybe they got a little comfortable you know it's like they they dropped their guard and most of the guys that i know that went down doing dangerous stuff it was it was more about that you know it was just maybe too many too many times at it or too much of it and not mm-hmm. enough balance like not enough you know it's like i for me i feel like it's important to to get you know i guess i guess for me the when i look at it and cuz i'm like you said not huge like obvious goal setter but i have one goal in mind which is to to live to survive uh uh-huh. That's the at the top. Yeah. That's the thing, and I want to. <laughs> and I'd like a to good be. Goal to have. And I like to yeah. be. And I'd like to. And I'd like to 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 be old and 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 gray. Like I mm-hmm. would like to. I I see that as like the objective is to be standing at the end, right? And so if that's the goal, then that means that you have to go about things, not like, you know, burn out hot and go out on fire, right. like because. I think that that and that and that's I mean at a certain point along your course you got to make a decision mm-hmm. you have to make a decision about what you know because c- you can you can get caught into that right you can yeah. get caught into that and th- and there's something pretty selfish about that actually and so and, and and because at the end I mean when you die you don't care but what about all the people right. that care about you and yeah. so in a way you got your you got your people that you love your family your friends, these other people that, so some of it becomes that some of it becomes like, Hey, you know what? I, I do I want to do that to my kids? Yeah. Do I want to do that to my wife? I mean, we don't know the the time or the place. Of course, no one does. And it could be in 10 minutes. It could be in 10 days, could be in 10 years, could be, you know, we don't know that. Right. So, but the honest, the, the honest way to go about it is, is, you know, Okay, we're, we're you know we always go any risk taking that we we take we it's all about there's a there's a there's a kind of a methodical process that we go through in 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 that so that you know the more dangerous it is the slower you go the more mm-hmm. the more the more preparation you have mm-hmm. the more you know there's a certain like formulaic process that you do to do things and that muting are, out all the all the external noise yeah. right so that you can you can hear your intuition and you know when it's the right moment well and be and be good with saying no yeah be good with like ah, you know what no, I, right. just, I don't feel it like today's off yeah. or you're or, or, like when alex honnold's on the wall he was gonna he was yeah. gonna make the ascent that he's was like, the best thing not, ever. yeah I, he's I, like I, i'm not doing it today. i respected that that yeah. particular scene in all the, the film. cameramen are I'm up like, there they're I'm ready like, to go that's like, the exact, that's mm, perfect. I go yeah. that, I, I, I respect that. Not, you know what, go anyway. And then timber right. because you, you sensed it, but, but the pressure of all the whole thing, I, I, I can, I can appreciate that because it's knowing how to make the, that, that's a big judgment call. Right? That's mm, a, huge. that's, yeah. Because those guys were already, all the cameramen had scaled up. They were exactly. ready. There was a lot of stuff that Pressure. was already in motion. Pressure. So being able Pressure. to like completely tune that out and not have that be part of the calculus about whether you're going to do that hard thing or not. Important. Takes a lot. That takes like a, you know, a, a solid, you know, barometer. Important. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that that, but that's a reflection of the real barometer that allows you to do the other thing too. So mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it takes a certain, you know, the, for him to do that, actually be able to do that climb, you really have to have a certain, because people, you know, I think when people watch things that are, that are, you know, in, in, from their perspective, you know, beyond understanding, they, they, they like to put a, they like to disclaim it as, okay, that, that's just a reckless person. That person just is, they're just, you know, they're just reckless. They don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to say, "Hey, no, that's some calculated, well, you know, well orchestrated, prep- prepared." It's, a, it's the end point on a multi-decade it, journey that this person's been on. Yeah, you know, and it's easy yeah. to look at you and say, "Well, Laird, you know, of course Laird can do that because Laird's Laird." You yeah. know, and certainly you have, you know, some genetic gifts and you have a certain level of talent, but to dismiss what you're doing is just, oh, well, that's because he's Laird is to deny like all the work that you've done, like this this dedication that you've shown over the course of your entire life to get you to the point where you can drop in on a wave that nobody's ever surfed before. Yeah, well that's, and and I think that's the, 
I think that that's always the part where, you know, when they, when they talk about people being adrenaline junkies and they go, oh, that guy's just an adrenaline junkie. I think that's a way to let them off the hook so they don't have to actually, mm. you know, pers- to, to do the work and pursue the right. thing that they might be interested right. actually in. But they'd right. be like, oh yeah, no, that's just, that's just the way, you know, that's the way that mm-hmm. just a disclaimer to let, let people it's an off, easy, Yeah. Off. It's an easy way for people to not have to look in the mirror and, <laughs> and, and evaluate, you know, yeah. where they might have yeah. more potential because that's scary. Scary. And a lot of people don't want to do that. They right? don't. You know. No. But at the same time, there is that kind of you know addiction junkie mm. mentality. Yeah. There is a there's a a strain of that in all extreme sports in life. But you know, in, it's certainly part of the the kind of historical record of surfing. You know, you grew up in a culture of like play hard, play hard, right? But yeah. you've emerged from that as somebody who I look at as you know, part of, I, I would suspect now the young surfers look to people like yourselves. It's not about the partying lifestyle. Mm. And it's really about how can I optimize my performance in body, mind, and yeah. spirit, right? Like you yeah. sort of set the tone yeah. for this next generation of surfers and you see it, like the Smith brothers are all about that. Like there's a, it's a, it's a healthier ecosystem right now. Well, you know, I, listen, I, I was, I was around a lot of radical stuff yeah. growing up and, 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 you know, I can remember, you know, ha- seeing guys that you looked up to that were like your heroes. And then you'd see them on a, you know, on a park bench with a paper mm. bag and, you know, falling over and, uh, and just how, how, uh, painful that was like as a, as mm. a young, as a young guy you see and and, and you're and, like you were the guy who you were that I looked yeah, up to yeah, right and yeah. now you're you, my yeah, hero yeah, yeah. and there you are in the gutter and 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 I saw it more than once and and I think um you know I I felt like that if I was ever in that position that I would look at it like a responsibility. If I'm fortunate enough that somebody will look up to me and so, for some reason at all, I don't want to ever give them an excuse to justify and, and including my children Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like I, 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 I was, I used to, um, I, well, I used to, but I, I loved, you know, I love red wine. I'd go to France. I had French company. I'd go to Bordeaux. They'd send me cases of the, be- you know, most beautiful Pinot Noirs in the world. And I'd be like, you know, this gorgeous stuff. And I was like, but I liked it uh-huh. maybe a little too much. So I was like, you know what? I don't want anything to have quite that kind of power over me mm-hmm. that, that I could, cause my mother was a, a, was a drinker and, 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 you know, we had long family, you know, a relationship with drinking. I'm like, you know what? I think that's going to be a problem. So if my daughters decide that they want to drink, it won't be because it was just part of what we did at our house. And yeah. it was just like, accept it. I'm going to do de- It's going to be because they discover it on their own. They do it on their own, but it's not going to be because of me. So, um, a, a little bit of, you know, I think a combination of all those things, I seen, seeing guys that, you know, ruin their lives. And I seen deaths like bunker spreckles, you know, overdosing and guys, uh, you know, and, and then, and then heroes being in, you know, just zero to hero to zero. And then you're looking at that guy and you're like, wow, what a bummer that is. And what disappointment that is. And, and, uh, you know, and, and at the end of the day, you know, leading by example, like, like uh-huh. in a way, it's the same thing as parenting too. You can say whatever you want. They're just watching what you're doing. Right. So it's like at the end of the day, and I think that's true with, with, you know, if you're in a position of influence, I mean, and, and I see it in a lot of major sports, I see, you know, a lot of, you know, influential athletes promoting, you know, stuff that's, you know, poison to, to, mm-hmm. to people and, and, you know, for money, but obviously they probably have enough money. They really don't need to do it. At the end of the day, it'd be kind of good to have some discretion, kind of go, you know what? Probably right. not that stuff because right. that stuff's not so great. And then every little kid that looks up to you is, thinks that they can drink that and it's going to make them like you or whatever that. So I think there's a lot of things that, you know, and then, and then, and then don't forget just wanting to op- have optimum performance, mm-hmm. like wanting to right. have, wanting to be able to continue to perform perform at a certain level and, you know, be the gray hair at the end, be on the top of the mountain. And, and you're not going to do that, you know, being stupid. So, well, you've, you've always had this growth mindset, right? Like you're always devoted to like trying to iterate and innovate and all these things. Um, and that's, I think harder than it seems, or it looks like most people 
kind of figure out what their lane is. And then, you know, the, they become successful in that lane. And then you get calcified around that. It becomes harder to be creative and yeah. to question your set of beliefs or your approach. You know, as an athlete, like this is how I this is how I optimize my performance. And then you don't want to hear about any new ideas or anything else. But you seem like somebody who's always been really open to 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 learning and experimenting. You know, I I, I attribute part of that to uh way I grew up. So, because I was, uh, you know, I grew up in an environment where there was a racial thing against uh -huh. guys that looked like me. And so I was already, I kind of had, I had that, I think that was helpful because I had, you know, I always used to say, you know, if people don't like you for how you're born, then why would it bother you if they don't like how you behave? And so yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, I, I think that being the willingness to be a beginner again and, and, and not, and, and be okay with people laughing at you and like you being like, you know, hey, I'm going to try this thing and it's stupid. And people are like, that's so dumb. Why do you, you know, I, I mean, multiple times through some innovations that we were involved in, I've, we had people just naysayers going, that's right. lame. You're, you know, that's not surfing or what you're doing is not this. Mm -hmm. Or so I, I was used to that. And then it becomes almost a formula. And, and, you know, I talked to my friend Paul the other day about, you know, how we like the early part of the curve, you know, that early part of the curve is nice and steep when you go from you know, a beginner to like starting to become proficient at anything. Uh -huh. It's, it's a really fulfilling thing. And then once you're at this other thing, you're at a real, you know, you're at a plateau and you're just scraping for, you know, for, for little tiny, you know, millimeters. And, you know, I, I, I talk about surfing and you, you look at the amount of hours that we have and you go, okay, well, another hour on the 30 or 40, you know, or 50,000 hours that you have, you think that's going to make you better or is being more flexible going to make you yeah. better or is being stronger going to make you better? Or, you know, is uh, these other things are going to have a more of an influence, but you got to be willing to be a beginner. I think the biggest thing is about being a beginner um, and willing to subject yourself to failure and being okay with that. I think I've been hurt. Uh -huh. I've had enough injuries that helped me with that process where you wonder if you're ever going to be able to do the thing you did and then not being, and then having a, you know, I think, I mean, it's a, to, to not be a narcissist and to not be a, have an ego and all that, that's impossible. There's uh -huh. no way you're not going to have some narcissism or, or, or some ego aspect to you. Yeah, you I mean, you have to have a, a, a bit of an audacious sense of self to even attempt these things. And there's a healthy aspect to that. It's about keeping it in check, right? And <laughs> making sure that it's not the, it's not ruling the roots. Exactly, I, I, exactly. So, so. But then, I mean, that's an important piece to it, but, you know, willing to, willing to fail, being good, okay with failing is important. And I think, uh, and then, and then what happens is, is you do it a couple of times and then you're like, oh yeah, I know I'm, I'm at this part in the, in that uh -huh. journey. And then you do it again. And then it becomes almost a formula, right? There, there becomes, there becomes a formulaic aspect to learning right? Mm -hmm. Or creativity when you have an idea and you're on a napkin, then you make a prototype, then you break it and you crash and you can't do it. And then you can kind of start to do it. And then eventually you get to a point where it's something that you can do well and it's, you have things for it. And then it's, and then, and then it's not as interesting at that point. It becomes a little less interesting. And I think one thing I, I've been conscious of, and I, it's, and lately it, it's, it's, it's happened a little bit, you know, happened a few times where you don't become victim to your uh, past past successes mm -hmm. by saying, I got to go back out and show everybody. Yeah. Like- Yeah, that like, was what I was going to ask you. Like when you, <laughs> you know, hey, I'm the big yeah, wave guy yeah, and yeah, then somebody yeah. else goes, yeah, yeah. finds another wave yeah, and yeah. surfs a bigger one. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you got to get out there and show them who's boss? You know, you're over here tinkering in your garage yeah. with new shit, but yeah. there's got to be some aspect of you there, who's there, like- there, there is, but again, yeah. I think, but, but that's where I said, having a good perspective about your ego's voice, like what, what is that in you that's doing it? Yeah. Like why, why is there something saying you need to go show these, show people what you can do? You, 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 you did that and you've showed that. And, and in a way I can do that. And, and, and I do aspects of it, whether it's on purpose or not, but it doesn't bring me the kind of, uh, joy or the kind of satisfaction or fulfillment that doing something that I haven't done does. Mm -hmm. And I start to realize, you know, that I really am inspired by doing things I haven't done. Like mm -hmm. that's the more, whether it's a, a distance I haven't done or a height I haven't done or a speed I haven't done or yeah. a, a something, but something that I haven't done 
is a lot more fulfilling. That just brings you a lot more satisfaction. Well, it's it's freeing too because you, you're free. not you, you're liberated yeah. from measuring yourself against mm. past successes, right? I mean, as somebody who <laughs> I mean, you're already somebody who doesn't really care about what other people think anyway, which is healthy. But that's helpful. <laughs> but the, yeah, that is helpful. But at the same time, like I know when I go to the pool, like I don't want to look at the pace clock because I'm used to clocking certain kind of intervals, and I you know I'm not able to do that now. So. The, yeah. it's, it changes your relationship setup. and I'm That's, doing it. Yeah, it's yeah. a setup. And it's yeah. like, I, I have to constantly remind myself, I'm, I'm doing this because it brings me joy, you know? Absolutely. But what else can I do? Or can I do something different? Um, I'm not innovating in the sport like you are in surfing, but you have to recalibrate your relationship to these things and not hold yourself to some standard that's gonna cause you suffering, right? Well, so and it, I think by yeah, opting out yeah. and just being like, well, I'm gonna go do all, and then you're constantly, yeah a newcomer, you're new and you're always you're always progressing and learning. So you're getting fulfilled through that process. And then that's usually big yeah. improvements. Those are big right. successes, not from doing something that you can't do to do to being able to do mm -hmm. it. That's a huge success. You couldn't, you did. Not you did something at this level and you maybe you're doing it at that level, maybe not quite at that level. I go, that that's just a setup for failure. And I I, I uh, there's a great quote that I love that it says, never let your memories be bigger than your dreams. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that I really I think that that's important because I have friends that, you know, have played professional sports and, uh, and then they're retired and everything's about what they did. Right. And it's the, not what they're the, doing or what they're going to do. they're ever going to do in their life that's going to recapture that like no. sense of glory of being in the Coliseum. No. Right. And, yeah. And so how do you move forward? Right. So that, so, yeah. so, and that's, that, that transition is pretty tricky. I think and I've been- 28. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. by the way. Yeah. And there's probably, that yeah. means you're probably, you know, if I, there could uh -huh. be 40 or 50 more years. Right, <laughs> right. So, you know, and so I think that that's, uh, you know, the irony is, is that maybe, maybe I didn't, maybe early on I didn't get, I wasn't in the Coliseum and I didn't get the glory, but then I also don't get the downfall of having gotten mm. the glory and I can just kind of, it's kind of like, it's a flat, you know, it just kind of yeah. keeps going along, yeah, yeah, yeah. which, you know, it's not on purpose. It just ended up that that's how it, how it's worked out. And, and also knowing that you can go and, and, and not, without a, approval, you can be fulfilled. So I can go out and I can do something like I'm at a stage right now where I can get a couple friends and we can go somewhere and we can do something and no one sees it. No one, there's not a video, there's not a film, there's nothing, no one even knows. And it, works and yeah. it's great. And you come back and you feel like you feel when you did something that everybody saw and everybody said was great or people saw and said sucked, but you didn't, so you almost, it's nice to be at that, at that stage. Right. It's just, it's just, it's just for you, it you just know, and you. it makes it a little bit more special. That's that pretty way. nice. Yeah. Cause then you're, cause then ultimately you're in, you know, you, that, that, that you're not relying on the approval uh, of other people, which at the end, they they really, truly, really, they don't care uh -huh. at the end. They really yeah. don't care yeah. about you like like you care about you, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. The the funny thing about innovation is, is that it does require a certain level of like foresight because we always think we're at the end point of everything. Like it's, everything has progressed to its ultimate pinnacle already, right? When surfing was at a certain mm. competitive apex with the short boards and all the, you know, like yeah. the competitions yeah. is like, well, there's nothing left to be said or done here, right? Yeah. And to be able to think outside the box and say, well, what if we try this? What if we try that? Requires a certain, you know, I, it, there's something very unique about being able to see what, what nobody else can see. Well, that's what I, and that's what I said to you uh, in the, initially was having the understanding of what things mean. Like if I make this glass, right? If I, I have this thing and I, I think about, I'm going to make this thing and it's going to shape like that. And you're going to be able to put stuff in there, you know, and you're going to be able to hold it. And then you're going to be able to drink out of it. Like, but you got to see that, right? You have uh -huh. to be able to see what, what the function will be at the end. Cause that's the only way that you get the motivation to actually continue the process, because it's a pretty mm. R and D and and that kind of development. That's some can be pretty discouraging. Like there's some discouraging aspects to to ideas that, um, and one of them is other people. Like the 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 truth is that there was a a woman who who had some in, in, did some incredible innovation. I don't even know her name or, or or what she did, but I do I appreciated what she said, which is they asked her, you know, when you have a great idea, you know, you know what should you do? And she goes just don't tell anybody for at least a year. 
(laughs) because they will discourage you. They'll be like, you know what? That cup thing that you have, that's a terrible idea. And, and it'll sink in. You'll be like, and then when you break the first one and the second one and the third one, and she was right too hard, (laughs) too Mm -hmm. hard. And then you, and then you stop. And mm-hmm. then, you, and then that's where, so I think there's, it has to be, and that's why I talk about dog with the bone, you know, that relentless right. thing that you know, you're not really, a, it's not really a goal, but somehow you're just constantly, you just always go back to it. You're like, oh, the thing I like it. And then you go back to it. And I have ideas that, that I've been thinking about that have gone away from, and then eventually I come back over here and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. And then, and then I go away and I do some other idea and that, and that, and then I go back to the one and then you just keep, and eventually mm. that one just pops its head. And, you know, it, I mean, I think everything's about timing. I mean, we know that it's like, you could do, you know, a good idea, you know, 10 years ago mm. is not a good idea today or, you know, or t- there's ideas today that are, that won't be good for 10 more years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. it's just all, right, you know, right, right. So yeah, yes. I think the foiling thing is a is a good example of that. It is because the technology is at a point where they can you know make this available to consumers with the electric foil. I mean, that stuff's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It, 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 well, suddenly out of the it. blue, right? Yeah. So yeah. when you look back, it seems out of the blue, but yeah. it's not. It's you've like, been, you're like, yeah. not yeah. for me. I'm yeah. doing this yeah. this like we've been foiling for fifteen years. You got I know. Out, but but you know what. Uh, we talk about that in success too. When the guys go, "Hey, the overnight success," and I'm and the guys like, "Hey, I've been doing this for 15, you know, right. I've been doing it for ten or fifteen years." It's like an over. It's it's interesting how that. Yeah. You know, when you look back though, you know, and think about the early days of you getting up on stand up paddle boards when no one was doing it, and now you look around and everybody's doing it. I mean, there has to be like a certain level of satisfaction. Like, there is. I mean, it, it, you've created like this cultural groundswell, like this popular sport that so many people are doing because you thought, hey, I should get a longer paddle so I can stand up on this thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I you know, and, and Gabby and I talk about it and I, I think I, you know, for me, in a way, those are my, those are my reward, re, you know, those are the rewards, those are the, those are the trophies. That was, that's like my trophy. Like people mm. are like, I don't have a trophy case. I don't have a bunch of things. I like look at all my trophies, all my championships, all my stuff. I don't have any of that stuff. So in a way, those are, you know, those, uh, that's fulfilling when you right. see the it's an incredible it legacy. Has. Yeah. 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 So I see yeah. that you get to see, I mean, when you see a guy in Dubai with a turban paddling like that, yeah. you're like, that was, <laughs> that went a long way. <laughs> yeah. That's that went, wild. That went around the whole planet. I was watching you foil on uh, Nazare, and it's just wild to watch that. And what was interesting is that it allows you to surf the wave in a completely different way. Like you're not relying upon it cresting. Like no. you're able to ride it much earlier and it gives you this longer ride. So it's a completely different relationship with the wave that mm. that technology, you know, makes available. Yeah, it, it totally re, what's interesting we, we talk about with because of that, that we we have to re, like the definition of, of, of an unmakeable, a wave, you know, an unmakeable wave is changed. You know, yeah. what was unmakeable before now all of a sudden becomes makeable or what mm-hmm. was unrideable before now becomes rideable. So the parameters all change, which is interesting how, you, you know, you, you just have a different device. And now the way we look at waves and what's rideable, like that's our biggest thing, like, like looking, there's new waves that are, that wouldn't, that would never be considered for surf, for conventional surfing. Uh-huh. Now all of a sudden, so the whole world opens they, up. They, it opens up the whole yeah. new set of circumstances, which is which is you know which in an ever populated Earth is pretty great when there's new frontiers, and uh-huh. and it can I guess that continues to happen in, with a lot of innovations, but where there's just like a whole new frontier, where like in a world where everything's saturated, like all you know most of the great surf spots on the on Earth people know and they're at right. and they're surfing and those numbers are increasing and there's only so many waves. Now they're, you know, now they're making wave pools and stuff because yeah. to try to make up for that. But, but to be able to have a whole new, you know, a whole new search. It's is cool. Good. Yeah. But, but I wonder, you know, it wasn't until maybe a couple of years ago that I'd even heard of Nazare. Did yeah. that just, I mean, so it seems like in that kind of timeline of iteration, there was Makaha, then there was Waimea, then there was Mavericks all of a sudden, then it was about Third Reef Waimea, then there was Jaws and then uh, Tiapu and then Nazare, right? So it makes me think there probably is another wave out there that no one's found that's there waiting is. to be There's discovered. There's always another wave. I mean, Nazare in, in itself is is a, is a it, it, you know, it, it's a, it's a, there's a, there's a couple things happening in Nazare, which is, it's a very 
uh, photographable wave right, because, because you the get the that, foreground of the lighthouse or whatever that and the gives angle that of the cliff, which shows you the bottom right. curvature of the face. And the wave also does a does a thing where it stands up for a second. It's not, I mean, and and, and, and nothing against Nazare, but it's not an, uh, like an optimum performance surfing wave like like Jaws is. Like Jaws, mm. still at this moment is the is the is the is the best big wave. Mm. performance wave in on in the world there's just there's no i mean i don't care what what big wave you go to you take all the big wave riders they'll all agree when you go to jaws you know i mean the the the, the one thing um about nazare is that it has a there's a consistency to it and when it it doubles up it has a it has a it has a uh you know, kind of a, a geographical phenomenon where the uh -huh. where the wave doubles up and two waves come together. That's why they get that the extreme height of it. So there's a lot. So there's a lot of yeah. a lot of that around around Nazare that, and it's in front of a cliff, so it's extremely dangerous. Mm. But as far as surfing goes, like as a surfer, you you look at that wave, and you're like, that's not a, an ideal wave for surfing. Uh -huh. Like as a as a as a where Jaws, you would say that. But the the truth is, is that Nazare wouldn't wouldn't even be Nazare without Toen. The toe end because you wouldn't you wouldn't even be able to you wouldn't go yeah, there yeah, yeah. You, you wouldn't, wouldn't you wouldn't that, that's why it right. wasn't a surf spot because toe in opened it up and made it become a spot so uh -huh. now it's a spot because of toe in without toe in I mean you can surf Nazare on some small on the small days like conventional you know prone paddling mm -hmm. but but it's not Otherwise, a no. it, it's not a it's a it's a it's a it's a yeah. You know, and the foiling was at the break next to Nazare, right? Is yeah, well, we, well both, both Nazare, yeah. and and there's another wave uh, up the coast from Nazare that that for foiling was perfect. So, uh -huh. and actually, it was probably great on this last giant swell that they had, but they weren't letting us into the country over there. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. When were you there? Like in the spring? Yeah. 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 Well, we I was there in what February, February March. Mm. Yeah. Um, let's talk about. Uh, the fitness journey and the pool workout, legendary. It's been going on for a long time. Lots yep. of dudes, you know, yeah. are part of that community. I've got tons of friends who are either part of it or have dropped in at some time yep. or another. There's a, there's a, it's almost mythic at this point. Yep. It begins with Don Wildman, really. Yeah. So let's talk about Don a little bit. Don, the king. I yeah. miss Don. So Don, uh, one of my heroes. Uh, is will be and always will be was is and he's passed away but mr wildman uh you know s started bally's health clubs right started he was a founder of the largest health club chain in the u.s was in the korean war um when he was 17 and and did the iron man what did first one when he was 50 uh -huh. i think yeah. did, did 10 or 10 or 11 iron mans and you know, did used to do all the all of the uh, senior games in Utah, all the bike racing stuff, and and him and I, I met him uh, at a helicopter snowboarding uh, resort in Canada. Mm -hmm. Randomly, some guy just says, "Hey, that's Mr. Wildman. You need to meet him. Go over there." And so I, hey, went over there and hey, uh, nice to meet you. And he was sitting there, and then and then cut to like two years, three years later, I was down in Malibu at a at a restaurant that we, we eat breakfast. Walked in there. Gabby and I had just moved, uh, moved there and he happened to live right up the street. And then him uh -huh. and I just started spending time together and, you know, doing a bunch of crazy things. He just was an endurance monster. Right. And he, and he, you, you know, just and destroy a anybody on a bike. Yeah. He yeah. just was a monster when it, when it came to just, you know, suffering, he was the king of suffering. He loved suffering. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So that was the original crew, right? Yeah. Like he had this spot down at the beach and yeah. you guys would meet up there and, and his do gym. pull ups and yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And his crazy gym. He had a crazy circuit workout that'd take you two and a half hours. And then we'd ride the bike right. after to go eat breakfast and and uh and then I kind of brought all the the water stuff to him. So it was like he he swam because he, you know, triathlons and stuff, but he never uh so I got him into foiling and stand up paddling and uh -huh. all that kind of stuff. And, and we, so we started, you know, venturing into the water right? and, 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 uh, I did the race across America with him, uh, at least yeah, part of it. I remember that. I remember yeah, that. We yeah. did part so of that. You, something happened like yeah. our, halfway our, in and well, you our ended guy up. got hit. I got, our, right. one of our right, teammates right, right. got, got yeah. run over by the opposing team's escort vehicle, <sighs> broke my friend's leg. So that put us out of the race. And we, cause we were trying to, we were, uh. Trying to Don was trying to break the record. He just wanted uh -huh. to go break the record with a bunch of people that no one heard of. It was like a four so, man, re, four yeah, man team, four man relay. It was, and then you ended up like 
paddle boarding down the Mississippi or something like well, that? Well, I did the Colorado. Uh, okay. I did the Colorado. I've been down the Colorado and yeah. stand up paddle and a bunch of, you know, all that, right. all that suffering. I think we, our, our best one mm-hmm. was we did, uh, I call it the Hawaii 500, but we, we biked every island in Hawaii and paddled every channel consecutively. So we biked across the big island, like 125, 130 miles uh-huh. from South Point to the, to the tip. And then we paddled yeah. to Maui. Then we biked across Maui. Then we paddled to Molokai. Then we biked across Molokai. Mm-hmm. We paddled to Oahu, biked across mm-hmm. Oahu, and then paddled to Kauai. The last paddle was uh, 22 hours. Wow. So I paddled 22 hours on to Kauai. And then we That's rode the- That's intense. Then we, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, that was I, I did, I suffering, did, pain I did, and suffering. I did five Ironmans on the five Hawaiian islands in yeah. a row. I yeah. thought that was badass, but I wasn't paddling in between the islands. <laughs> 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 I took an airplane. Yeah, no, you we, know. but- so that was, we've had some, well, I had some fun with Don, Don and I. And he was crushing it, right? He passed at 85, right? Yeah. So he was crushing it all to the, the way day. to, to the, the like, end. To the, right. the last month, he just, he ta- he tapered off and that was it. He had some, he had some lung stuff with, I, I kind of feel like maybe it was attributed to all those hours on PCH, mm. you know, riding that bike and yeah. breathing heavy with all those cars, I think probably was in my mind. I was mm. just like something, but he, but you know, he went out like he wanted to. Like yeah. he, he was good, solid to the end. I think we had done a helicopter snowboarding trip to Chile the summer before. So mm. that was pretty, wow. that was At pretty 84. great. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. And, and, and I remember one of the guides, we were down there and one of the guides said, how old? Cause he was, he would snowboard and he'd go fakie, which is when you uh-huh. flip around and ride the reverse stance, which, you know, the kids go fakie, right? Yeah. Like, like not the 80, you know, right. the 85 year old, yeah. not the 85 I mean, year old. Yeah. It's like jackass, <laughs> like, like Johnny Knoxville dressed up as an yeah. old guy doing yeah, yeah, that, yeah. you know, but, but it's, but it's, Don but it's Wildman. actually the guy. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, so Don, what do you, what did you take from that? I mean, other than like he just never stopped. Yeah. Right. Just well, uh, well, a rolling in it. stone gathers no moss, you know, and mm. a running car keeps running. So I think, you know, I looked at uh Don as someone uh that that was a lover of life. Like he was really like whenever you know, I remember, you know, we we'd have dinner and he'd be like, This is the best dinner I've ever had. And then a week later he'd be over at the house and this is the best dinner uh-huh. I'd ever had. And he would be, you know, his grandkids would send him some radical hardcore music and he'd be playing it in his Porsche and stuff. And, uh-huh. you know, I mean, he was super- But that's that beginner's mind, Beginner's right? mind. Yeah. Crazy beginner's mind and, and, and willing to, I mean- when you're 80 something, you're still going to, you're going to be pretty yeah. crusty in certain ways. You're, you know, you're going to, you're, but, but he was willing to subject himself to, he'd always do new stuff. I I could get him. If I said, you know, I go, Hey, you want to go dive with the sharks? Oh yeah, sure. Great. Hey, you want to go skydive? Oh yeah. Hey, you want to go sail on the America's? Oh yeah. I mean, it's like, I'd invite him on the most random mm. stuff. He always said yes, unless mm. he had some other plans already and, and, and was willing to subject himself to that, to that, uh, you know, that, that, Learning yeah. curve. And his name was actually Wild Man. You know? Which is the best part. Yeah. People go, well, how come you call him the Wild Man? I go, well, that's his name. <laughs> like Donahue <laughs> Wild Man. It's just perfect. Perfect. It, you can't make it up. That's uh-huh. what I'm saying. You can't make that stuff up. So for me, I think to know him, it was mm. interesting because I've had friends that have passed away that I had remorse for. And Don was a, one of the first guys that I had ever, I didn't feel bad about him you know, I mean, of course I miss him and we think about him all the time and talk about him, but I didn't miss him like I had other friends. Cause I, cause I, I didn't, I didn't, there was nothing I felt like that. No that, stone unturned. No stone right. unturned. That yeah. he was, that it was all good. And he, and he, and he crescendoed like he wanted to, he wanted to go out, you know, being the guy that you remember and not withering away. And, right. and I think, so I think all of that, I think that it really, it was, it was like remorse. There was like, there was no remorse. There was no, right. there was no, which was pretty great. I'm like, if I can live a life like that, where, you know, where people around you uh-huh. feel like there's nothing, you know, there's nothing remorse. Okay. Hey, you miss a couple of people you miss. And of course, and some of the stuff that you leave behind people that are hurt, but, and that's, that's gonna, there's no way out, you know, without yeah. that happening. But that guy lives on and lives in, on in what you do now with, lives on. at the, with the pool workout, that's, right? Lives on. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I think for me, you know, I always, I get bored easy and I think connected to the innovation and I don't, I try to get out of these ruts. I like to try to keep, 
learning and getting taxed, you know, like getting taxation from the learning. Mm -hmm. You know, I told somebody when you ever, you know, when you learn something, how sore are you? And then that, you know, after you've done it for six months, how less sore are you? And when you've done it for a year, you're not even sore anymore. It's like the first time mm -hmm. you run a mile, you're like, you feel like you're broken. And then, then you got to run two and then pretty soon you got to run 10 and then pretty soon you got to run 50. It's like, uh -huh. there's no, you just have to keep building where, so I think there's something about that, about doing new things. And the pool really came out of my disdain for like traditional swimming. Like, it, you know, I'd be like the orca with the floppy fin. You yeah. put me in the pool to make me swim. I'd, I'd feel like I need, you know, I love in the ocean and mask and fins and, you know, seeing and, and being moved. And so, you know, a lot of my pool, the pool stuff really was a marriage between the gym and swimming. Uh -huh. Like how could I marriage, you know, yeah. weight lifting and swimming and, and, uh, which resulted in kind of a, a pretty, you know, and then we throw in heat and ice and some other, right. you know, other kind of exposure stuff yeah. and breath work and just always trying to change it up. Just start looking for, you know, looking, looking to make it new and, and interesting and, 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 uh, and try to stay out of those ruts, you know, yeah. it's just those, they're easy to get in. And before you know it, you're, you know, you're the, right. the bottom sitting and you on could the play around. You could play around within the rut mm. and think that you're innovating, but you're still very much in the rut. You're like still? that's something that I, I definitely plead guilty to, <laughs> you know, and then I'll convince myself that I'm working on my weaknesses, but I'm really not. You yeah, because I really don't want to. I don't want to work on the weaknesses, because that sucks. Yeah, right. Yeah, because you're gonna not yeah. feel good. No, it's true. You it, know, it's true. But um, but still, it all harkens back to Hawaii because the original, you know, pool workout is carrying stones, stones along the running. bottom. You know, running along the bottom of the the ocean, Absolutely. which is something I've done. It's not fucking easy. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and and yeah. and ult and and ultimately, when you think about that dynamic of stone carrying and running. Mm -hmm. Not a lot to do with swimming. No, not at all. It has a lot to do with breath holding and legs and legs burn the most oxygen. So whenever you incorporate dynamic leg in, you know, you know, from the monofin or mm -hmm. anytime you're using, getting the quads going, man, that oh, the breathing, all, yeah. the breathing goes it's way up. up. I mean, you look fast. at long distance swimming, it's like, don't move the legs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know? Drag them. Drag them. Drag yeah, them because no, they're going to burn oxygen. No forward yeah. propulsion is yeah. worth the amount of energy expenditure exactly. of using your legs. Exactly. Yeah. Unless you have some giant fins on right. and that's a different discipline. But, but so that's, so that a lot of it came out of that. And then, and then just, first of all, being in the water, back to the water. So mm -hmm. we're back in the water. We're in the water, breath holding fear of drowning that stuff is really powerful that's right there with falling and being burned and being eaten by giant animals so yeah. whenever you deal with that kind of psychology about holding your breath underwater and you can't breathe underwater no matter who you are yet um so that's a big psychology right that that what the what that environment represents and then you can be you know you're in a pool at my house so it's pretty controlled so you can mm -hmm. then we can kind of ratchet the the, you know, there's some fear things that we can deal with, um, in that environment that, that, you know, and then compression, you know, we learn about compression, compression and blood flow through the lymphatic system yeah. that, you know, like in an hour, your, your body circulates the blood through it that normally takes like 24 hours. So you have some, pretty, yeah, it's a different thing. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, a yeah. different thing. And then you can be real aggressive. You know, I take some basketball guys and we do a bunch of jumping work and all of a sudden their, their verticals increase mm -hmm. and you can take a guy that probably shouldn't jump a lot because they're so giant, Yeah, but they can jump hundreds of times without all that impact. Yeah. You, re you remove that thing that's yeah. causing all the injuries. Exactly. Right. It the creates momentum this like supportive tissue around you. Exactly. And it also exhausts you more than anything. I mean, there's something about Exhaust. whatever you're doing in the pool, man, you will sleep well at night. You will. You know, I don't yeah. know what that's about, but yeah. you know, I can go out and run for hours or ride my bike, but nothing makes me as tired as, as being in the water. Well, you, you, I mean, listen, they, they're, if, they're, if, if they're saying a two and a half mile swims worth 125 mile bike and a 24 mile run, that's, they're telling you what the, you know, the yeah. difficulty, like you're saying like two, two miles, two and a half miles is equivalent to these other things. I think a lot of it is temperature. Yeah. I think the temperature, yeah, even you if gotta it's, regulate. well, yeah, mm -hmm. your water seven, even the water 70, it's still not 98. That's mm -hmm. 30 degree, you know, 28 degree temperature difference. That's over yeah. time. That, so I think there's that, and then I, the psychology, and then and then the breathing, yeah. you know, and it's it's. But we love the we love the water work for that, and and for us it correlates to our relationship with you know being in the big ocean and being in the big surf. You can move, you mm -hmm. know. It, 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 one of my theories is that 
that you will gain technique out of necessity, right? Because if you, to, in order to swim a giant dumbbell across the pool, you're going to have to be efficient. Like, mm-hmm. I don't care what your stroke looks like. And I can get a stroke coach and be like, well, you should move your arm and do your thing. I go, here's a dumbbell, swim it over there. Yeah. And if you can swim You'll that dumbbell over there, you're doing something right. You're learning, <laughs> you're knowing, you know, yeah. you know it's kind of like putting uh-huh. a giant pack on. You carry a huge pack mm-hmm. and you take it off. Probably going to be faster. You yeah. know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. When you add the survival aspect mm. into it, right? You yeah. You got to get to the other side somehow. Exactly. And you're going to use all your limbs to do it. Anything you can to get there. Mm. Well, it's also, it's still like, there's not, it's not like anybody else is doing this, right? So that it's so open-ended in terms of like the innovation. I'm sure it, you're, you're like tweaking me, it all the time, it, right? It's amazing to me that that it's not, that they're not, that it's not being applied. It hasn't been applied. You know, it's like one of those things, like you'd think that, I mean, I know from what, you know, and we're always being creative. Now we're starting to be able to kind of, combine stuff so we have a couple you know different things and we put them together and make uh-huh. hybrids so like circuit training like yeah. you know in weightlifting you have all these different techniques and then you start to combine them and then you have yourself some new new uh you know there's always a new like a program yeah. right you, yeah. do you do you make the, you have like an app right the xp we do xp so you with, make that pool, available to people pool, but not the pool uh-huh. because the pool is so specialized yeah the water is not something to go yeah. subject people to but don't breath sue work, Laird. don't breath, yeah, <laughs> breath work. And, no, basically. Yeah, the, the, but the pool we need. I mean, yeah. we 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 are very selective about. We have trainers for XPT, you know, uh-huh. for the for the fitness stuff. But for the pool pool specific training, we have very few people that we would that will license to become a, a pool just because mm-hmm. of because of the water yeah it's like it's Dangerous. not this isn't something to fool around yeah. with and especially when you have weight you know. and then throw in you know a 200 degree sauna in between sets if right you, if and, it's a, light. and a cold plunge yeah. so it's like working yeah. those protocols into the actual workout itself yeah because you think of those as a post-workout thing mm. right or a mm. pre-workout thing but to drop that into the middle of the mm. whole thing creates like a whole different kind of stress yeah we've been doing some interesting stuff too like because we're always looking for ways to you know, it's like, you know, run a mile, run two miles, but you, you have to keep making mm-hmm. the thing longer because you get kind of better at it. You adapt, you know, that we're such mm-hmm. adaptable creatures. We adapt quickly to, to and things. So we, we shake it up, but you know, one of the things that we've been doing, um, you know, I mean, we put the, we put the, you know, we put the assault bikes and some of the other stuff in the saunas, yeah. but we do, uh, one of these protocols where we do, a where we ride, uh, some sort of cardio assault rowing machine, one of the, something that you know, boost your, boost your, your cardio. And then we go into the ice plunge and we mm-hmm. do, we go back and forth between those. And that just has a pretty profound effect on you. Pretty, yeah. It gives you a good hammering, but yeah. you know, just when you think, we always say, just when you think it was safe to, you know, right. To do heat and ice and do the, the thing, now you gotta, you <laughs> now know, now you've got a new, but we do, right. but we just, I guess we do that out of more out of our kind of our interests are, you know, in our uh-huh. search, our discovery, it's more out of discovery. Like, Hey, what if you do this? Oh, that's cool. Let's try that and see. And, and a lot of it comes from that. It comes from that innocent, you know, that, like that child, like, you know, why are kids so good with certain things? Like they get a, they get a, you know, a new a phone and they're all of a sudden doing everything because well, right. they just, they don't just go, well, what if I, I don't know if I should. And, you know, they, they just go in it. And I think that's, I think that that's that's healthy. I think right. it's go about it. Whatever you're doing, go right. it's like good chefs are oh, I didn't think that that curcumin would make that taste right, better right, or right. whatever. Just yeah, yeah. you know, it's just and and that's the same I think in innovation is really again a formula. It's like you can put it in whatever you're doing. It doesn't I don't think there's a I think the basic structure of it is the same no matter what no matter what genre mm-hmm. you're in just change the backdrop like mm-hmm. what 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 do you is it fitness is it nutrition is it is it sport is it art is it tech is it what is it it's like it's you, curiosity <laughs> yeah. willingness to try things and yeah. then t- kind of remote taking failure off the table right it's not about that it's like we're just we're going to pull on these threads and see where it leads us for sure and yeah. failures and failures part of that mm-hmm. process yeah that's just your that's part of yeah. what you're doing that's so you're what are you 56 now yeah. 56 yeah. like I'm 54 so you know it's it's like trying to figure out how to continue to stay fit stay engaged try new things but are there certain things where you're like oh, I can't do that anymore or I've noticed this about like how I'm aging so I have to you know adjust like where are you at with all of that 
Well, most just, of the things I'm doing is not so measurement oriented. I don't have all those data stuff to use that against me. <laughs> uh-huh. Smart. Yeah. There's some of that. I don't yeah. have that. Well, I only ran that mile at uh-huh. a while. You know, I don't have all those numbers to, that would probably sh- show some deterioration. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just think it's probably yeah, but the you're nature also- of- so attuned with your own body, you yeah. know where you're at. Yeah. You don't so, need all those things. So a lot of it is, you know, I, I, I guess for me, a lot of it is I'm just not doing a lot of the same things uh-huh. that I've been doing. And, I, and I'm more, you know, a lot uh-huh. of my training really has been not to hurt myself because in the past, a lot of times you get, uh-huh. your training injures you. And then you're kind of like, oh, that's not great. So lately it's been more about that, right? It's a little bit more about, okay, and- you know, I think the holistic thing is, is become, I'm better at it. Like I'm better at my, my diet, my sleep, my workout, that's not hurting me. My, you know, so I'm Mm. in a way, I think, you know, whether my performances are, 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 you know, I just don't, I don't, I don't have any real tangible measurements of, you know, Hey, I'm not as fast up the hill. I mean, I know when I, when I, you know, if I go, get my 18, you know, my 18 year old protege with me and I go up the hill and he kind of, you know, disappears. I'm like, well, I might not have dis, you know, uh-huh. I might not be back yeah. here if, when I was 18. Let's just put it that is way. This, but is this, this guy, Luca that's yeah. living with you? Yeah. Yeah. I was hearing about this yeah, guy. Yeah. So yeah. he's a young, big, big young, big wave, big wave rider. rider. Yep. From Half Moon Bay. And you and just took him in? Well, yeah, my, I, uh, Gabby thought it would be good for me, you know, uh-huh. to, uh, since I'm, <laughs> so I'm in a house with all women. So yeah. she, 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 uh, she, she met him and he was, he was, you know, young and full of testosterone and looking to be, uh, an aspiring, it looks like he's an aspiring seal at this point. Mm. So he's aspiring to become a, a seal. So I'm, I have a lot of friends, uh, that are in, in, in the, in the seals. So, yeah. uh, that are out and in. And so I've been exposing him to that. So he has a better idea what that will entail. Um, he's a big wave surfer. Um, he's a little bit of a throwback, pretty rare, uh, uh, type of person in this day and age. He's, uh-huh. he's kind of like, you know, like a 1950s Cro-Magnum man, like a little bit like yeah. this is his, the way his mind works. And, and he, so he's been good. He's helps us. He helps, you know, helps us at our, at our home with all the details, because we have a lot, a lot of stuff going on when you have, you know, daughters and mm. people and stuff and just, and, and train, he's really been with us to train. So he's, he's been getting, and it's been, and it's been nice to, to watch him implement kind of our, our work and then see the result that it's had on him and he's, yeah. it's made him strong. So it's cool to see, to watch him pool train and, and do, you know, do high X with gap circuit train, pool train, do all this stuff, breath work and heat and ice and all that stuff and watch it, watch him kind of, uh-huh. you know, kind of well, benefit. Well, it seems like it's your way of paying forward what you received, right? Like the, you, yeah. you, you know, you've, you've yeah. been the beneficiary of having like strong men in your life to, to for be sure. guiding forces from your stepdad and Don and et cetera, right? So for now sure. you can do that for this kid, yeah. which is well, cool. I, well, I think that's also, uh, what do they say to, um, at a certain point after you, you know, march on the ladder, maybe you, you, you either wanna be a, a king or a wizard, right? Uh-huh. Or you wanna be, you wanna be, you wanna, whatever that looks like, but I mean, and I don't mean a king in the, in the same of, but you're just not one of the soldiers fighting in the thing and that you can be, it's more about a wizard. I kind of like the, you know, you're like the wizard and, and the guys come to see you. And I always thought uh-huh. that when, like, I was, when I was young, I wanted to be like, just like a, you know, a, a guy, so, like a, the uh-huh. you go see the wizard, he's in the barn over there. Like you <laughs> it go- It is like that though. You know what I mean? Like pilgrimage yeah, up to yeah, your yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You right, get to go, go see, see the wizard, <laughs> go visit the wizard. He's over there. And, it, it, you know, uh-huh. and not that I'm a wizard by any means, but, but I do like that. Cause I have been that right in my mm. life. I've been like, Hey, Jerry Lopez, you know, I, like go to Jerry and Jerry would be there. And he, he, he's just ahead of you. He's mm. lived more, done more. And then you go to him and try to get some insight and it's, and it's good for me if I can bestow some, some, some knowledge uh, that I've been, that was bestowed on me mm-hmm. that helped me go along my course. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that, like you said, pay it back. And I think that's, I think at the end, I think that is really something that is that culturally we've lost, and and it really goes back to you know the yeah. wise men, 
that we, you know, that they're supposed to be the wise men. I'm not, right. I'm definitely not me, not one of the wise men, but they're supposed to be these, these people that you, that you're supposed to look up to them. Actually, right. they're supposed to be elders. We revere them for their yeah. elderly knowledge as opposed Which to may be dismiss just, them and put them in a home. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe that's just because they survived that maybe that the knowledge is, is that they just actually made it long yeah. enough to hey, live that long. <laughs> I'm just saying like, that might be, yeah. it might not be anything tricky. Uh -huh. It just might be. Hey, you can't be. It's like Wildman. You're that not going to be around. 60. The, yeah, you're not, you're not going to be around the world for 85 years mm -hmm. without getting something. Something's right. popping up, and even if you can just observe the guy and be like, "Hmm, the way he does stuff, maybe that's something to." Well, know. that's Hawaiian too. Hawaiian, Hawaiian, right? Hawaiian. Yeah. Which is which is more tribal. Which is more of how we mm -hmm. that that how that that the way the structure of culture has been in the past is that you had to have you wanted to have some elders like the el whatever the woman elder man elder just elders that 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 help the youth and mm -hmm. because it because i think that that's something that we're missing i think the yeah. the way we look at elders we kind of let's just like you said put them in the over there out of our out of our sight let's not let's not and not realizing that there's a lot to be learned yeah. and you see people that have admiration for their grandparents mm -hmm. and that go there and with their i mean they're those are special people Right, yeah. those are yeah. those are special people usually that have that that have the, but also you know I, I always say because you know in Hawaii we talk a lot about respect right it's always about hey you got to respect hey you, you didn't respect me well I always say yeah but you got to act respectfully mm -hmm. so act mm -hmm. respectfully and then you get respected so you know I think it's important that the elders act respectfully and then they can be respected but mm -hmm. if the elders are not acting correctly, <laughs> not behaving, themselves. not behaving. Then it's no. I'm <laughs> yeah. just saying, and that's part of the issue too that we right. have culturally, right? Is yeah, yeah, if the yeah. elders aren't behaving correctly, then it's hard to respect them because you're like, well, you guys aren't even behaving correctly, so we're not gonna. But maybe they're not behaving well because they've been disrespected to to you know unfairly, exactly. exactly. You know? And we have lost that. I mean, exactly. I you know I'm reminded of Julie, my my wife's father. She grew up in Alaska. Yeah, he was an engineer. Um, he moved the whole family up there and he uh, he was having the most success like in the very late years of his life. Like he, it got to the point, he's like 89, he could barely see and he would keep getting hired on these jobs because Knowledge. the Native American culture respected him. And they're like, we'll, we'll, send, we'll come and pick you up. We, just, we need you and we want you there. Like yeah. he was the wise man, right? And yeah. even though he's like, I should be retired. Like he just couldn't quit. Yeah. And there's but something how great really is beautiful that? about that. How great yeah, is that, that you're the most needed at the end of your right. life? You know, we were talking, cause I, I was reading some Adlerian uh, thing that I really enjoyed. And, and, and uh, you know, they were talking about that sometimes the value is just the presence. That the value mm -hmm. is just the presence, that, that just being there is, right. is the value. Cause people, well, what value do the, do? and I go, well, listen, at a certain point, if, if 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 the elderly can't do anything, just their presence that they're there. Your yeah. grandma's there. Your grandfather's there. They just they exist, mm -hmm. and that can be enough to be uh, a value, yeah, right? Because they're talking about everybody being a value, and you're like, right. well, that, they're a value. They're they're there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, all right. I want to know yeah. how you live with all these women. Like I've oh, got, I got, oh, I got two oh. daughters around. Yeah, well, you got the two same sons age too. They're older. Okay. They're they're great. Yep. They were easy. Yeah, girls, a little complicated, tricky, a little trickier, complicated. Right? You know, I I I guess because I've been going through different stages of it, and and uh, you know, part I was describing my position as kind of like being a post in the house, like uh -huh. a giant post that holds the roof up. You just have to be there. You don't move. You hold the roof up so the roof doesn't fall down. And that's and that's your position. The, the Everything's chaos going is, around yeah. you, but you're just standing like that. And you and they need you to be there. Uh -huh. Stationary like that. But uh but one thing uh about I mean, listen, I, the only thing I know is I don't know anything. Mm. I you know I know nothing when it comes to I'm, I'm coming to, to the, appreciate that. To the idea. girls. Yeah. yeah. They're they're complex, like like and and I think I think one also too the, it's not it's a complex time, yeah. You know, on top of it, I think it's not it's not, um, you know, now the social pressures and I think it's so for, hard to be a teenage girl. And you're and then it's yeah. and then it because it's twenty four seven. It's not just when you go to school at school or when you go to the no. playground at the playground. It's not just at these places. It's all, all day long every day. And I think that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of pressure 
um, on that mm. on them. And and you know, I, I I I think I you know, for me, I feel like I try to lead by example, and 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 uh, and I'm pretty pretty. I mean, it's all about honesty. Like st- st- talking about, you know, I have a conversation with my youngest daughter about makeup and she's like, okay, make, I want to get some makeup. And I go, okay, well, you know why you're going to, you want to put makeup on. Right. And she goes, well, cause it makes me feel good. And I go, no, you want to put makeup on to attract males. Like, and she, <laughs> I go, you want to, you want to, you're trying to attract a male. Uh-huh. And she's like, no, it makes me feel good. I go, well, it makes you feel good because, because th- that you think it might help you be attractive. That's part of why you're yeah. doing it. So, and it it's, was interesting. I think it's even more complicated than that because <laughs> she's on social media and she's yeah. seeing other girls yeah. her age yeah. doing that. Yeah. And you want to feel like you're part of that or you can fit in with that. And yeah. there's a, there's like a self esteem thing that, yes, is about, but it's guys, about attracting, but it's also too. about yeah. signaling to the tribe and where you fit and yeah. all of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, hard, that, but man. that's, that's, you know, but yeah. that's the, that's the complexity yeah. of it, right? Is like, hey, you're doing this to fit in, to do it, to fit in with the girls, your other girls, to fit in, to be att- attractive, because that's ultimately whether you're being attractive to the girls to fit in or not. I mean, that's all part of that pressure. I'm just saying that to, I just wanted her, I wanted her to understand that there was another motive than just right. her at her, her right, at the right, house, right. like yeah, you know, I get it. for herself. Yeah, it's not just for you. It's for you're doing it for other people. Yeah. So. It's not easy, man. No. I feel like uh, kids either define themselves by trying to model the behavior or the example that you set and and like kind of covet approval that way, or they define themselves in opposition to who you are. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna just contravene everything that you're about to create some distance. And maybe that's an attention thing. I don't know, but I'm I'm dealing with a little bit of that right now, where it's like everything that we're about, not interested. And my, my the idea hates that the you beach. have, like your daughter's yeah. going to come to you and want to ask about life advice, like that's not happening. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. not quite. I'm trying like, to figure out like the how, what yeah. the right thing to do is. Yeah, you model, you 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 set an example, you model the behavior, but you have to have a very loose relationship with the results of that. And you got to be able to roll with stuff that like you didn't expect. Well, and I, I, I have a feeling that you're not going to see the fruits of your, of your work until they leave that, 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 that a lot of the seeds that you plant and a lot of the things that you do, you, you're, you won't, you won't, you won't see, you mm. won't see until they go out of your house and, the, and, the, and they have their, and, 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 and because those seeds Whatever it is that you've planted, those are growing, but you can't see them. Right. And the thing that they they're going to turn into is going to it's going to come after. It's uh-huh. going to come late. It's going to come. I mean, I I can speak for myself personally. Like yeah. how how that later you have in one my daughter life, is like twenty five or something like that, yeah. right? Older. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I have and then I have you know a seventeen and twelve. But but it's like I think a lot of this those fruits are going to come later on. You're gonna uh-huh. it's going to be you know they're gonna you're gonna you wish you would get to you know reap the rewards of it. But there's none of that, yeah. right? There's none of no, that. No, there's no. none of the, There's none of the. There's <laughs> none of that. That's deferred for deferred. who knows how long. Who knows right? how long? You just hope that yeah. they come. That comes out. But you know, I, I I see it happen. You know, where the girls will go. Well, you know, my one one of my daughters will go be with some a family, and then they come back, and they'll the family will be like, oh, she's so amazing, so helpful, so great, and I'm like, I'm like. I know. I have. Gonna, <laughs> is that did, not, was that hard? We're talking about the same person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I you know. know. My my I, daughters hate the beach. Yeah. You know, like oh the beach. So oh, I hate the beach. Hate surfing. Hate yeah. surfing. Hate the beach. Hate it's, working out. You're eating that. God, God set it up that way. Oh, crazy. I, I, so that I have they couple, can be your teachers. Yeah. yeah. I have a. I have uh, Gabby doesn't like it when I say that, but I'm like, yeah. I said your children were sent here to wear you out. Um, and so you can die and they can take over. And then she's uh-huh. like, oh yeah, that's, you know, that's just not <laughs> right. And then my other thing is I said, parenting is like building a samurai sword. Uh-huh. You take the steel, you heat it up, you beat it with a hammer and you stick it in a bucket of ice. And you just do that over and over. And eventually it's the hardest steel in the world. I said, parenting, a parent, you take, the kids take you, they heat you up, they beat you with a hammer and they stick you in ice and they do it over. And then you're tempered. Like when you're uh-huh. done parenting, you're going to be like, you're going to be tempered. Either you're that gonna, or you're, you're broke, done. Or you they, break. They break you oh, in you half break and, and you're done. Throw you yeah. back in the furnace. Right. So you've been, you and Gabby have been together for over 20 years. Yeah, right? we're going 25. Yeah. We're coming up on 25. Um, 
and and you've kind yeah. of you're, you you've kind of modeled this you know relationship in a public facing way um which is interesting you know like uh, the way that the dynamic that you guys have figured out for yourself i think is super um inspiring in that and you know my wife and i are you know we strive to do this ourselves is that you know you're both very independent people you're not defining yourselves you know by you know what the other person you're you're not relying upon each other to define who you are right there's a there's a respect you come together when you come together it's quality but you both have your kind of independent worlds and you provide the space for you guys to have those experiences and they're not loaded in the way that a lot of relationships are where it's like yeah i want you to be that guy who goes out and surfs big waves, but only on my terms, right? Yeah. And that's that's hard to yeah. get to that place. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think both Gabby and I, probably our childhoods, the relationships that we saw around um, us growing up or the lack of, um, you know, one of the two, I think that that had an, a big influence on us. I, I you know, I, I, I know that uh, you know, we talk about, you know, each of us are, are responsible for our own happiness, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that I'll go get happy, you go get happy. And then when you're happy and I'm happy, you come back and we'll both be happy together kind of thing. Like not, not putting the pressure of, um, you know, I, I'm fortunate that she's, she, that she, uh, has, has, is, you know, and she, I guess she, she could say she's, she's fortunate that I'm, I'm completely, you know, uh, a fan of, of Gab, uh, you know, of Gabby's and, and, and in her corner and support uh -huh. her in things that at times probably I wasn't exactly stoked about, but, but the, it was more important that it was more important for me to, to, to be supportive of mm -hmm. her than it was for me to evoke my, my opinion or my feelings about it. I think that was a big piece of it that I would always, and she's amazing, uh, that sh she doesn't ever put the, like any of my, my passion or my, my, my draw as something against her. It's not mm -hmm. taking away from her right. as something like, oh, you did, but it's taken away from her. And so, you know, I, 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 the, the combination of, but we, we, you know, I, I, if it's funny cause we were, you know, we've talked about this before in the past that it's like her and I, I think we have enough, we, we, we're scared enough of each other that we're like, it's a cold war, you uh -huh. know, it's a cold, we have a cold war. We're just, we know it's, it's that we both have nukes. We both could drop them. Right. It won't be good. You could die from the Mutually fallout. Mutually assured destruction. You could, <laughs> <laughs> it's sheer destruction for everybody, no matter who fires, uh -huh. let's not fire let, and keep that. And so I think that's been, you know, and we've had our, we've had our, uh, you know, we've had our ups and downs, like every relationship sure. and every effort. And I think, I mean, every, it takes effort in the relationship to, to, to make it, but, uh, but you know they they did a study with ten thousand couples, and they said that the only uh, thing that was consistent amongst all successful couples, no matter what the dynamics were, was that the man respected the woman. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was you know I have a, t a ton of respect for Gabby as a person, uh, and 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 then and then as a woman, and then as a mom, and as a you know a, just all of her as a person. And so. Uh, and I had, and I also had a great relationship with my mother, and I have a lot yeah. of respect for my mom. My mom was a hardworking lady, and you know, raised some children and some men too. And so I, you know, I have that. Uh, I think that that that, and I and I can. I, I don't think any just that any just any guy could be with Gabby. I mean, guy, men have a hard time sometimes with women that are strong mm -hmm. because they just. They either yeah, they're I mean, insecure. She's, she's, so. she's pretty alpha. I would yeah. think that she checks the alpha box, yeah. you know, yeah. in a, many a category in your relationship. Yeah. Which yeah. is, and which is And great. you're more that you can yeah. be more of the teddy bear. Yeah. Affectionate guy. Yeah. Myst mystical. Yeah. Well, you call me in when it's, when, when, when the, when you need some real dirty work done, uh -huh. you know, you know what I mean? When <laughs> yeah, the toilet yeah, breaks, you call me or yeah, I get it. when there's a bear outside uh -huh. or, you know, like. Right. <laughs> but she's a, I mean, she's a force of energy. When yeah. she walks into a room, yeah, yeah. you, you got to reckon with that. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Which, well, it's great. I think, I, I think it, I don't think I would be able to respect her if she wasn't. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think that if she. No, that's if her she, power. Yeah. If she didn't have that, I, I would be, it would. I mean, I would respect her, but it wouldn't be the same like 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 I do. Yeah, I want to talk about Laird Superfoods. Okay, you guys just took this company public, right? We did. 
I saw pictures of you like ringing the bell at the stock exchange. And it's just like a fish out of water thing. Hard to believe. You know? I know. Hard it's wild. to believe. I actually got to ring the bell for Wildman when he when Bally's went. They oh went. wow. But so I was able to. But Your I had nothing time. to do with it. This is a whole different thing. This uh-huh. has got this has got my name on it. And right. And, and uh, the fact that we were in a position that the business has been you know, built like it has been and, and, and run like it has been is the only reason why we were able to go public. So Uh that, that was a, and that was a, that was an education. So I was, I was in, I was in go public, um, uh, it's no small thing. School. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Well, just the whole process is, is amazingly elaborate, Uh complicated. Like it's a complicated, I I wonder how as many companies do I like given all there is to do and mm. and the details and I mean we're fortunate enough to have great people that 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 was you know that, yeah that was taken well, I think, care I of. I think it it I mean obviously it suits you perfectly because it's so part and parcel of your ethos. It's really just a manifestation of you and your lifestyle. It's the um, irony. That's the irony. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that, that's the irony. Well, yeah. it's that weird yeah. thing. Like yeah. you know, you 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 yeah. mature into something that you're not. Right. Yeah. Like the idea that you're in New York City at all. Like yeah. I know you spent a year there when you were a kid, but like those yeah. that's oil and water. Yeah. Um, but when I look back over the course of your career, like you're somebody who's done lots of deals and had licensing and you've had yeah. this product and that product and some of them worked, some of them didn't work. And I, I've always looked at it at an arm's length from a distance and not really knowing anything, thinking like, he just needs to get with the right partners because this guy's got so much to offer and maybe he's not partnering with the right people. So I look at Laird Superfood, I clearly he's with the right people and this is working. And it's yeah. like, it, to me, it feels like long overdue that you should well, have had a win like that. this like a long time ago. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, again, it's all about timing. Mm-hmm. I think the timing of it, it, I think it's, you know, I I, I mean, it's it's like anything, maybe you, I might not have been in the uh, position to appreciate it like I am okay, now, now right? you know, yeah. if it was earlier or, and, and maybe it just, it wouldn't have, wouldn't be what it is if it, if it hadn't. So I think that's a big piece of it. it it's like the timing of it. I, if I if I had to say, hey, when you know you get to choose whenever it was going to happen, I, I, I the way it's happened and the and 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 the truth is, you know, Gabby and I talked about this before. You know, we've been very cautious about who we align ourselves with throughout our careers, yeah. and 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 just about what brands and is it reflective of our brand and all those kind of things. And 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 the truth is that we had to you know, ultimately build a brand that was reflective of our brand. Right. That was that. And that, I mean, that's, yeah. that's it. And, and that, and they were, that we were able to, but, but that's the truth. The truth is, is that you want to do it right. You yeah. got to do it yourself. Well, well mm-hmm. we just, cause there was no one, there was no business that we could think of that really truly reflect, reflected our, you know, our brand mm-hmm. like, like, like this does because it is our brand. So yeah. it's, so I think that's a big, that's a big uh, piece of it. And, and, you know, and, and again, I always look at ideas like, all ideas and, and, you know, and superfood is one of them that, because everybody's, we're all so caught up in monet. It's always about monetary, right? Mm. How much is this and how much is that and and all that stuff. But I always think that it's about ideas, right? And so if you think about how big is an idea, right? Well, let's just think, how big is the idea of Facebook? Mm. Pretty big idea. Was this an idea? What was the idea? Mm. Well, I'm going to connect people and the thing. And then you got Facebook. Right. So how big is any, any of these, 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 how big is, you know, how big an idea is, is the Apple phone or how big an idea is, a you know, stand up paddling in my little world or how big an idea is, you know, whatever the idea is and the other stuff comes later, but the, but the, the idea itself, you know, what is that? Like that, what is the, what is mm-hmm. the nucleus of the idea? And I think that's the, you know, so with and this, that the idea is, the potential, right? Yeah. So with so, this, the idea is how do I get people eating better? How do I get people please, eating healthy? How do I please, get people excited about eating healthy? Please, how do I get yeah. stuff in people's diet that aren't, uh-huh. like people are out there that aren't eating well, like that don't even, don't even have an opportunity to even understand what right. eating well is. I've never could, heard of turmeric, which by the way, you ever. brought me this, yeah, fresh turmeric from Kauai. <laughs> Ever, but you know what I mean. I'm just saying, yeah. like they they don't have yeah. any they don't have any idea or the resources or the availability or all those things. So I think that's so it's really about that i about that idea. And I think you know it, it's in our nature, especially Hawaii, where aloha is really about helping, about mm-hmm. sharing. Like it's a sharing culture. I mean, we have other things about it, but one of the things that 
that I was gifted when I was a kid was that I was shared with, mm. you know, that you, that there was a lot of aloha, that aloha is sharing. And ohana. And, yeah. And ohana, mm-hmm. exactly. So the, um, but that, I think, I think, I think how, you know, I think it's, uh, it's about ideas at the end that all of this stuff is about ideas and then what, you know, and then seeing how big the idea is, what's the potential of an idea uh, of an idea. It's like, I mean, everything we have going on right now, every company that you see, I mean, our country, all, all, just everything, everything's about ideas and the potential of what they can be. And, and, and then, you know, trying to maximize that, how mm-hmm. big, how, you know, it's like the idea of toe and now you have Nazare. It's like right. things just appear to reflect a concept. So, yeah. But yeah, it's a trap, man. So in this case, though, you're you're not going into an office and managing people, right? Well, that's not I, my that's yeah, not my that's skill not set. Thing, that's right? I have. Like you're a, formulating. I have a part. I have a partner, right? Um, who 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 does that very well? So he he uh-huh. that's his 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 gift, and we have and we're attracting we're we attract good people. Mm-hmm. Like we just it's the you know how that is. I have a. A thing I used to tell Gabby, a thing called a honey line, which is, you know, when you f- see a bee, you follow the bee and then another bee, and then pretty soon uh-huh. you're at the hive and that's where the honey is. It's like, yeah. so good people attract good people. So we have, you know, we have, a, we're attracting really good people. You know, m- the the majority of what I'm involved in is is just, of course, always products, like what, what we're, and then marketing, because mm-hmm. it's what we, it's what we've done. Gabby and I have been yeah. marketing for our careers. We have to be yeah. self self marketing because our platforms were so tiny you know we talk about our the size of our platforms have been so you know volleyball and surfing mm-hmm. i mean they're those are little platforms and so you got to be pretty uh creative to survive in those you know yeah. it's not like you know nba or nfl where you just no it's different you know? but you yeah. but you both transcend those subcultures like yeah. you're you're you know you're, you you can both go by your first name people yeah. know who you are and yeah. you stand for an idea that's much larger than your sport yeah yeah and, and when i think we've been fortunate to be able to do that too yeah. right so there's it's a combination that you know and I, I i tell young athletes all the time i go hey listen if you if you it's important for you to know how to talk it's important for you to know how to to behave in public in a way it'll bring you a lot more opportunities because you can be great mm. a great athlete but if you can't talk and you don't know how to act you're going to have a you're, you're going to have a limited potential sure. and you can actually be not as good and have and be well spoken and, and know how to conduct yourself and you'll have you'll have a pretty good you know uh you'll have a better opportunity uh-huh. to actually you know make a living from it i think young athletes intuitively understand that because yeah. it's well, all now, about yeah. social media and developing yeah. this platform, right? Like it's not just, oh, I'm on this team. Like yeah. they understand they have to take responsibility for their career trajectory and yeah. they can be riding the bench and and become the most yeah. popular or important player yeah. because yeah. they've figured out how to get people to care yeah. about what they have to say. Well, they're, but they're new. also seeing the chain wrecks too. Yeah. They're also seeing yeah, the chain yeah, yeah, wrecks yeah. too. So they're seeing, they're right. seeing the both. They're seeing yeah. the instantaneous failure of greatness. And then they're seeing the success of subpar, right? So right. you're seeing both. So they're having, there's a, there's a, you know, they're, 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 they're getting a pretty good spectrum of, you know, what, mm. what not doing it right or what doing it right looks like. So they're, mm. you know, cause we're at the end, we always talk about monkey see monkey do, right? We're the, that's what humans are. We, we, when you see it, it's hard to be the monkey that doesn't see and does. That's the, that's always the trick, but uh-huh. inevitably, you know, there's, what do we say? There's nothing new, just a new application of an old idea. So yeah. to think you're the first person to ever think of something or do something is, I, I always find that pretty arrogant. Cause it's like, no, that's not honest. Mm-hmm. Honest is there's, it's probably a combination of, you know, something or some other thing that's been done uh, at, in some way. And then you're just making a hybrid right. and combining right. it and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's cool. building from it. Um, on that note, you being the wizard and all these people making this pilgrimage to your house for the pool workout. <laughs> that seems There's little... an aspect of it. I mean, there's yeah. some interesting cats that yeah. roll through that, right? Yeah. And I would suspect that that's its own Manhattan project, right? Like you have a lot of really compelling people doing interesting things in the world that you're spending quality time with. Pretty amazing. I would suspect you've learned quite a bit from this cast of characters, right? Pretty, like pretty, what does that look like for pre- you? Pretty amazing. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Uh, you know, sometimes Gabby just, you know, shakes her head, uh, whether it's, you know, I, I mean, 
we, we, you know, I'm reading something or some book or something. And then this next week, Hey, so-and-so wants to bring such and such the guy that wrote that book or, you know, this, (laughs) so we get a lot of that, you know, we get a lot of that, um, a lot of that, but you know, I, I, I feel like again, the honey line or even in nature, when you're observant, then you get to observe more. It's, I think when you're interested in, in, these subjects and you're, you're interested in health and wellness and you're interested in, in fitness and you're interested in longevity and you're interested in performance and you're interested in morality and whatever you're, I mean, you're just interested in these Uh things and you're, and you're, and you're meeting people that are interested in them. There's David Sinclair showing up today. And then they know know, somebody that knows Mm. somebody and then you have those guys. And then, so, so we, we, we get, um, you know, the truth is we get a, a, a really, amazing array and diverse from generals to, Mm. to, you know, athletes to, to, to perform as people, to doctors, you know, we're, I mean, we get mathematicians. I mean, we just get, it's like the, the spectrum, because what you realize is that, that it doesn't, you know, I always tell, I always say to people, I go, listen, being a server is like being alcoholic. Everybody's one. It's just whether you drink or not. Mm. Everybody's a surfer. It's just whether you surf or not. So when I, and what I'm saying is, is that everybody, there's somebody in every field that's into health and wellness and, 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 and learning and, and creativity, right? And no matter what field, they can be lawyer, doctor, the, the, you know, politics, mm. whatever they, and, but they're, so that's your, what you have in common. And so once you start meeting those people and then you got, you know, you got your friend, Rick Rubin and he's, he knows 30, he's like, Hey, you want to meet this professor of so-and-so? Right. I'm like, sure. And then I go down to his house, I meet the guy. And then the guy goes, Oh yeah, I have another guy. And he said, and then before you know it, you're like, all of a sudden you, you know, the world's a tiny world when you don't know anybody. Right. I mean, the world's tiny when you don't know anybody, when you know people, it's, it's mm-hmm. like you're, it's, 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 your, it's the next door. It's the next mm-hmm. room. It's like, it's even smaller. So when you don't know anybody, it's small. When you know people, yeah. it just becomes, especially like-minded people, right? So when you have all these, you know, when you have all these smart people that, that are, are interested because what you realize the common denominator in all those, that group learning. Mm-hmm. They all want to learn. Mm-hmm. They're all interested because all the smart people are lear- are people that learn. That's what they do. Yeah. That's why they're smart because they're always learning and like, hey, what's this? Or what's that? Oh, you're doing that? Oh, yeah. Okay. What you know? And you just see that and that and that's the that seems to be the common thread, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you never want to you never want absolutes and you don't want anybody that thinks they know. As soon as the guy says, "Oh, I know," you're like, right? Yeah, that's not the guy. I'm sure you've had the guy <laughs> who shows up who's full of vim and vigor and we, thinks oh, yeah, going to gonna Gabby. answer dick measuring contest. I give those to Gabby. And Gabby, those Gabby takes them in the out. deep end. <laughs> she takes them in the deep end. Yeah. And, you know, we first yeah. we give, we first, you know, Gabby, a girl, uh, a woman, yeah. takes him over. So then they think, oh, yeah, I'll have a real fighting cast, not realizing that, you know, she was raised by dolphins. And so yeah. she's over. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, right. you know, we, I mean, I always, I think it's like a mirror, you know, uh-huh. it's like a mirror. If the guy comes with, with, you know, a little edge, you just yeah. give him an edge. Right. Like, <laughs> he's going to, he, he's going to get what he came yeah, for. Right. For sure. We won't let, we won't let you down. Cool, man. Well, I, I want to be respectful of your time yeah. and, and, uh, and let you go here, but maybe before we do that, um, given your unique, um, skill set and life experiences and adventures and everything that you've, you know, experienced your whole life, you have, a a unique lens on the world. Like when you look at how most people live their lives, it's very different from how you live your life. And, you know, being conscious of the fact that most people don't have the luxury of being involved in the kind of things that, that, that you are, what do you like, what's the, what's the advice? Like that if you could just reach your hand out to the average Joe, who's, you know, doing the normal thing of you know working the job and paying the bills and raising the two kids like what is it that you want that person to understand about life that perhaps they're myopic to or can't see well that's a that's a that's a very tough uh thing i i you know i have a friend called me the other day and and you know and and, and obviously the the time that we're in is a heavy time right now and and 
some people it's real hard on and some people it's mm -hmm. not as hard on, but it's a real kind of time of uncertainty, right? Where, which they always are, but this one is overtly uncertain, yeah. right? This is very overtly uncertain. And, uh, he said, you know, uh, you know, what, what, you know what he just asked for some advice and i'm like I, i'm not in a position to give advice but but i but i said you know i did say you know be honest work hard and try to have fun like mm -hmm. you know like but but there's i think there's something about remembering that there's still these foundation things about you know it's important to be honest you just got to be honest we have to be honest 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 i think honesty in relationships and friendships and work in in life i think there's you know in in just all the things i think that that's and i and work hard i think we mm -hmm. got the i think there's no way to i wish there was a way to 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 you know i mean to work hard you know i always wildman and i used to laugh because he was retired since he was 50 and and but if the amount of work he did every day compared to people that work you couldn't even begin. And then also you got to have empathy for the people that, you know, that everybody's got a burden, right? So everybody uh -huh. has a burden. And you, I think we have to be conscious that we got to, you know, lately I've been trying to operate more with more tolerance and more kind of, you know, just a more, more, just be aware that, that there's people are under a, a big thing, but yeah. we, and you got to go, you got to figure out how to have fun. Mm -hmm. You got to have fun. If we don't have fun, it's, it's all, it's, it's not, it's not worth it it's like like i said i just say go surfing but i meant like just do think do something that brings you yeah. some sort of enjoyment your version of surfing, yeah whatever that yeah looks it's like. there everybody has their 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 thing and i think it you know i think too is you know when we're if we just can focus on the you know it's kind of like i mean you know this better than anybody you know how when it's far what are you doing you're just looking at the next step you just keep in your eye. You're not looking at the distance and going, man, that that mountain's far away. You just look down and you just keep <laughs> keep mm. keep your feet going. And before you know it, you're like, wow, I'm at the mountain now. But if you're looking, yeah, and I think that's a big piece of it. I think right now, I'm just yeah, I mean, it's there's it's enough to try to just you know live sufficiently today. Right. It's enough effort to just work today, do what you need to do today, take care of your family, the people you love today, just just keep your head down and, and that. And I think that a lot of the stuff that, I think less of the stuff will bother you and then a lot of the stuff will be behind, yeah. that will go behind. It's hard though, when the pressure's on and you're putting that one foot in front of the other to feel like you can indulge yourself with play or having fun. I know that. And that's, yeah. where, that's why there's a balance aspect to it. I think that that's where you're looking. That's the balance of it, right? Because all that dread, all that stuff, you know, and I, and I don't, I mean, for, that's why people are, you know, going to bars is because they're trying to get that release, but mm -hmm. you just have to figure out a way to get that release. That's, that's productive, not destructive. Mm. And so if you can just, because that's the balance, the equilibrium, because if all work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy, it's yeah. just not gonna, you just can't, you have to figure out what that is, whatever that, you know, I mean, some people can be as simple as just going to a movie. So they just get to leave their some you know, you do med meditate, do some breath work. I mean, you'd go for a swim, go for a bike, go for a thing, go for a hike, do, you go in the sauna and, you know, boil your brains, go in the ice yeah. tub and freeze yourself. Something, 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 just something to create just some sort shock of- shock you out of the routine yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just to create a little bit of tilt on the, on the other side, because, because all these other stresses are just gonna, mm. they're just pulling us, they're pulling us down, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get that. All right, last thing. Um, what's the uh, the wave that still remains unsurfed? Like the metaphorical wave. Like what's still out there that you're thinking about right now, and you're you're laying brick by brick that maybe we're not going to see it for five years, but it's on the brain. Well, I I I'm definitely have a project to go out in the go out into some sort of some sort of you know stuff you see on you know, National Geographic when the ship's going into the big, you know, whether it's down in the Roaring Forties or up in the uh, North Atlantic or out in the Aleutians, but mm. some project to go out into the big ocean and ride ride the big ocean oh, wow. out out at sea. Mm. So that's uh, something that's in my head. Any, I'm no working ever, has anybody towards, ever done that? No. Mm. No, I don't. I probably, yeah. they probably shouldn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> just out in the North Atlantic in the middle of the just, ocean. Just something, yeah. Well, I mean, you need in. the infrastructure. You know, you're not going to just yeah. be out there by yourself. Wow. You're going to need the right people and the right uh-huh. pieces. But that's something that I, I've been thinking about that I'd like to, I'd like to try to at least do that. That's pretty cool. Well, it's just there. It's yeah. just, it's something there to be done. That'll be. I I have a feeling it'll be something special when that happens. Yeah, that's epic, man. Um, all right. Thank you, man. That was great. Uh, Laird Hamilton Surf, that's where you're at and all the socials, right? Laird Superfoods. Talk to, talk to the smart people. Yeah. Are you are you guys in Whole Foods? Yeah. You are, right? Yeah. Nationwide? Yep. That stuff? Yeah, it's world. good. I appreciate that it's all plant-based. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. Non-GMO. Yeah. Just the purest. Simple. Right? Like you got to love it when you just see Coffee only creamers. four or five ingredients. Mm-hmm. You got to love that. Yeah, I've got, got a beautiful, got a beautiful protein uh, right now. That protein I'm powder. We have yeah. a protein powder. Yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying it. Okay, good. Yeah, you I, guys I, sent me a bunch of stuff. Okay, I'm perfect. It. Yeah. That, see, I don't know anything. I'm yeah, like, I know, I'm, I know. On, <laughs> I'm on the. <laughs> you're on, I, the, you're the, on a need to know yeah, basis. Yeah, I'm on a need to know basis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. They don't want to. They don't want to. Hey, Laird, we need you yeah, to go yeah, ring the bell. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Get in here and ring the bell, and they call me. Listen, they, they. I'm like the. I do well, like in, in disaster type stuff, like call it the flood, call them in the right. fire, call the fire, you know, they call uh-huh. them, call me in for the, call me in for the, the, you know, the big stuff. Right. Otherwise you'll be, you'll be found. I'll, otherwise I'll be preparing to be able to be yeah. ready so that I get, when I get <laughs> called in, I can do it. There's always that, you know, it's like the fire department, you know, it's going to uh-huh. happen, but you just gotta, right. you gotta train all the time with the idea that there's not happening right now, but it could any second, yeah. maybe tomorrow, next week or next year. Cool. Um, All right, man. Thank you. All right. Come back and talk to me again sometime. I look forward to it. Peace.